Good evening, everybody. My name is Bobby Craft, and tonight we're opening up season two with the locomotive that was promised in the trailer at the end of season one. Diesel! Yay! Extreme close up! Woo! Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness. I hope everybody had a great uh, week long break from this series, and I'm excited to jump back in and get some more locomotives created for you. Um, and, you know, it just so happens that just as Bill and Ben predicted, coughs and sneezles brought diseases to the island of Bubdor. We're going to be going ahead and starting our tutorial off with a 10 by 3 slabbed. Um, you can either use slabs or you can use copycat panels. I went ahead with copycat panels, making sure that they were on the same exact level. So as you see here, that's on top of it, and that is to the side of it. So, there you go. Um, we're doing a 10 by 3 slab of copycat panels. I did slabs on this guy originally, but I looked closer at a picture of Diesel from Thomas and & Friends, and it is a thinner slab that runs along the outside here. So, we're going to go ahead and just do that. And um, since we have the copycat panel in our hands, we're going to go ahead and just shoot down ourselves a quick cab and make yourself a three by three of the copycat panels and just boop out the middle so that way you've got that. And we're going to go ahead and make a little bit of a change to this. And there is a reason that we're doing that. We need to keep these front two filled in full blocks. You can use any black color you want. I'm using polished coal from the chip mod, but you can use any black color you want. I'm going to go ahead and continue shooping down the little 3x3 three three copycat slabs doohickey mabob thing there. Perfect. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to crouch and click to place down a row of three there. Crouch and click to place down a row of three there. Excellent. We're going to take some any glass that you like. I like the clear leaded, clear leaded glass from the chipped mod. And we're going to place those down like that. And then we're going to just fill in the rest of this cab with some uh, black block. There you go. And then you're going to go ahead and just place down Black blocks three rows high until you get to the front, just like so. And then we're going to place down two full blocks there and a full block there. A copycat, uh, copycat staircase. Repeat the process. Take a pause to delete. Okay, we're going to go ahead and grab hold of some copycat slabs now. And we want to go ahead and just place down copycat slabs all throughout the universe until we stop there. Again, placing down our copycat slabs. All throughout stopping there the reason we're stopping there is because we want this piece right here the framed elevated slope uh, edge we're gonna place down this frame elevated slope edge right there fill that in with black Go ahead and fill everything in 
black block of your choice. Make sure that you accidentally place blocks in front of yourself like this. Or it's not... You know, it's, it's like you're not even Minecrafting, bro. Alright. So, this is going to be our basic shape for our diesel model. And what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and provide some decoration to our diesel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just place down some of this smooth inlaid coal block just to break up the, the sides of diesel, make things look a little bit different. You can do whatever you want. This is your creation. We don't have mistake or we don't make mistakes we only have happy accidents as a wise man once said we're gonna grab ourselves some ladders place down two ladders one on either side there and then this is important we need copycat ladders or frame ladders whichever you prefer whichever mod you have we're gonna dye those black the reason we can't put a regular ladder there is just because regular ladders only fit or settle on or sit on full blocks. Copycat ladders will go on anything. So there we go. Now we have a way to get into the cab for diesel. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our magic bag of tricks and we're going to grab ourselves our roofing materials. So we want a copycat layer. And we want a copycat half layer. And we want this double smokestack. We're going to place the double smokestack right there. And we're going to just do run a layer. Or run a row of copycat layers down. Oh my goodness. And we're going to go ahead and just make ourselves a basic roof. While we're doing this, I just want to thank everybody for all the amazing support you've been providing on all of the videos so far. And the showcase or the season one finale has been an absolute blast to read each and every single one of your comments and to reply to everybody. I absolutely love replying as many times as I can to as many people as I can. So I really want to just take a moment to thank you all for your kind words, wonderful support, and everything else. So what we just did there is we placed down, we clicked twice on our copycat half layers, and for our middle, we're going to click three times to place it down three, three times, essentially. That's just going to give us a little bit of a curve and that will line up a little bit with the roof, but our roof, we want a little bit taller. So we're going to do this and then we're going to place down some slices. And, oh, you know what? Actually, we're gonna go back. I forgot. We're gonna empty that spot right there because we have something else that we're gonna do. So fill your roof in with, again, the black color of your choice. It does not matter what color you use. We're just decorating this point. We're decorating diesel. Okay. There we go. And our last but not least piece for the roof is we're going to grab a radiator fan from Steam and Rails. Place that right there. That's going to be like it's an actual honest to goodness diesel locomotive. Okay, now just to finalize the inside of the cab here, ah! we want to grab a train control. Might as well empty our pallet as well. 
and we're gonna grab a seat. We're gonna place one train control there, one train control there, and one seat there. What you can also do is you can remove those and put seats there so that way you know, if you're playing on a server and you want your friends to hop in, you know, like, hey, boys, hop in Diesel, let's go for a ride. You know, that's something you can do. We mustn't forget our copycat head blocks, or whatever they're called, headstocks. And then we want some red loco metal. Smoke boxes. And then we want some red dye because we need to also include an important detail as well. We're just gonna boop those down and then we're gonna right click these with the red dye because Diesel has red. Well, every one of these characters has uh, red details on their buffers and couplers, but I don't normally do that, but it just felt Felt like Diesel just needed it. So, there we go. We now have a completed Diesel. One thing you might say to yourself is, well, Bubby, this doesn't really look that great on the bottom, just because it's kind of weird. And I would have to agree with you. And as I said at the beginning of the video, and this guy over here, I chose to do slabs. On this guy over here, I chose to do panels. So we're going to just do a little bit of an experimentation here. Just to break up the back of it a little bit. Make it look just a little bit better. A little bit less of an overhang. And due to the limitations of the mod, and Minecraft and all of that stuff. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and try something else too. Because remember, we're in the decoration phase. We're exploring. We're seeing what looks good. What things look good and what things don't look good. So we're going to grab a girder. Shift click. And shift click. You know what? That actually doesn't look terrible. Now we've got a little bit of a bottom to diesel. And all is well. You might be wondering how I did this. Well, let's do that. We're going to grab ourselves a copycat half panel. Because the at the time of this video, the copycat half layers do not go on sideways like this, for example. So we have ourselves two copycat half panels. And we're going to grab a copycat panel. And there you go. I chose to do white wool on there, but you can literally do whatever you want. Let's see, white local metal, for example. Just that it wasn't providing connected textures like I wanted it to. So that's why I went with white wool because that had textures that connected and uh, everything was right with the world that way at one time or another. So uh, yeah, I wanna go ahead and end things here with our tutorial for diesel. And just to kind of show you something in the distance, put in the comments below who you think that is. And uh, that's our episode two right there, boys. Episode two. Okay. Episode two of season two. Nine more seasons. It's going to be beautiful. Yay. Woo. Okay, this has been fun, but you know what time it is. Okay, I love you, bye. Good evening, everybody. My name is Bobby Craft, and tonight we're unveiling the mystery character that I asked you all to comment on in the Diesel video to try and tell me who it was. This mystery character is Daisy. Ha <laughs> ha. 
how we're gonna go ahead and build Daisy today in in our episode. And one of the things that we're gonna do is just hope and pray that all the mods and everything work and and stuff like that. Um, but what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna start out with a three by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. A 3 by 15 um, block um, worth of slabs. And these are upper slabs. As you can see, if I go like this, it then becomes a lower slab. We want a 3 by 15 of upper slabs. When we start from or to place the uh, the casings or the bogies, whatever you want to call them. What we do is we're going to start from the front side, whichever way you want Daisy's face to go essentially, but it's also going to depend on where the flag is. So if your flag is facing this way on the station, then that means Daisy's face is going to go that way. So, and that's also true if you were to um, place down a station and you have the station with the arrow facing that way. And you place the station and you go like that. That just means that the arrow is facing that way. So Daisy's face is gonna be going that way. The wheels that we're picking are gonna be the double axle. And what I went with is the, I believe the arch bar. No, it's not the arch bar. Uh, where is it? The modern, we went with the, the modern just because of the way that the the modern wheels look. So let's just double check. Modern. No, it might have been the Bloomberg? Was it the Bloomberg? It is not the Bloomberg. Hold on, I'll get it. Uh, is it the Y25? It is the Y25. We went with the Y25s. Just because I liked the way that those looked based off of the ruler photos of the original models. And what that is, is um, that someone took of the original models and put them up against like a ruler and took photos front, back and sides. And you know, I've just, I've been using the ruler photos to build these models and kind of just developing my own system of measurements and things like that. Um, but anyway, let's keep cracking along here. From the front, you're gonna count in three and place your first casing. And then go to the back and count in three and place your second casing or your second bogey. On the underside, if you were to count in from that bogey, one, two, three, four, that's gonna be where the first part of the, what we're calling fuel tank is gonna go. And then just place the other slab right there. So basically just making a fuel tank or what looks like a fuel tank. Then go ahead and line the, um, the outside with copycat half panels, making sure to skip the second one in on both sides because we're gonna be doing something different on the insides there shortly. And what we're gonna also be doing is we're gonna grab a plenty of copycat panels. And at the time of this recording, there is a bug in Copycats Plus where if you place a um, locomotive that's already in build mode out of build mode or disassemble it rather, um, you will lose the copycat doors that you had placed on there. So once you have something built, just leave it, leave it assembled essentially until you're more than more than ready to um, disassemble and and do things or until the the bug has been fixed inside of copycats plus but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to add a door on either side there inside that door we're going to grab some leaded glass and lime wrapped or brass lime wrapped local metal leaded glass is going to go on the top brass local metal or brass line local metal on the bottom and that's going to be our doors for daisy our next step that we're going to do 
is we're gonna grab copycat ladders. Place down copycat ladders on all four sides. You can have whatever texture you want to have for those. I actually like the way the industrial iron sheet metal uh, looked. It kind of just gave a different texture and different color to the ladders. Just kind of made them pop a little bit. I thought it looked kind of neat. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a copycat panel. And we're going to go ahead and place that copycat panel like this. We're going to run a row of copycat panels along down the middle or along the bottom row as well as the middle row. Just right there on that side. Oops. And we want to go just like that. It's just like we did on the other side right there. All right, once we have our copycat panels placed, we're going to go ahead and place a piece of brass wrapped local metal, lime local metal on the four corners, just like so. And we're going to grab ourselves copycat panels to place over top of those brass wrapped local metal uh, just like so. So your daisies should be looking like this right now. This is where we are in the project. Our next step, we're going to go ahead and grab a copycat sloped layer. And that block looks like this right here, the copycat sloped layer. We're going to place down a, tempor a couple of temporary blocks and we're going to place down our copycat sloped layers. And what we want to do is we want to click seven times because eight times is going to be a full block. So we want seven times on these copycat slope layers. So we're going to click seven times. Five, six, seven. Oh, that was eight. So there we go. Seven times there. Remove our temporary blocks. Repeat the same process over here. Add temporary blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 And then we're going to fill those in with the brass wrapped lime local metal again. And we're going to leave those just like so. Next thing we're going to do is something pretty cool that I only recently discovered because I'm a bonehead and it takes a while for me to discover things. And sometimes people have to tell me um, what we're doing and how things work and everything like that. So once again, we're going to actually keep, you know, we probably should have just kept these temporary blocks. So you know what, we're going to add those back in. We're going to take a copycat board and place three copycat boards right there. One right there, one right there, and one right there. And what we're going to do with that now is we're going to remove our temporary blocks again, finally. And we're going to shift click inside those boards like so. Once you've done that, you're going to remove the outside and you have essentially just created yourself a, a front. So the best way to describe what this does is just to show you real quick here. So we've placed down copycat boards here, 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 and here. What we've done is we're occupying the same block space by placing down these boards. And we can do that to fill in as much of the block as we can. And there you go, see, it's so cool. 
I had no idea that that's what boards did. I suggested to the devs at Copycats Plus that we make a panel that connects and makes an L shape like we see right here. And the, he's like, yeah, the boards do that. And I was like, oh man, why did I not know this? But anyway, we're going to take a lead line glass and go right there in the middle and grab a regular piece of glass and place that regular piece of glass right there. And we'll... Oh, whoops. I did not mean to do that. So let me do this again so you guys see again what I did. We're going to place down boards here and here. Here, here, here. Here and here. And then you'll come inside. You'll remove those temporary blocks. And you'll shift-click five boards just like so. Jump back out and delete those boards right there. Whoops. There we go. Delete those boards on the outside. Yep, like that. Okay. And actually, I apologize. We can delete these boards as well. I was thinking something different, um, but we want that uh, brass wrapped local metal right there. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Next thing we want is we want to grab the lime slashed local metal. And we're going to fill in our back like that. And our front is going to be white local metal with the slashed. I believe it's slashed. Yes, it is slashed. And that's going to be the front of Daisy right there. The reason that we did the whole thing with those boards and discovered something brand new, so on and so forth, um, is because we can now go ahead with our slices and place copycat slices right there and run copycat slices right there. And we're going to grab some yellow concrete and place yellow concrete right there. You might be asking or saying to yourself, why don't you just use brass to go with the brass lime local metal? Because the brass looks disgusting when you do that. And we want something that resembles Daisy, not something that resembles vomit. And I will finish filling in our windows right there. So it gives the, the illusion that there are three separate windows something like that now what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of make a mess here we want to place down a bunch of temporary blocks it does not matter what block you use it does not need to be these brass wrapped slime local metals we just need a bunch of temporary blocks you're going to place those temporary blocks just like that. The reason that we did that is because we're going to stupidly... Oh my goodness. We're going to stupidly break our door and have to completely replace it. Oh my goodness. Um, I want leaded glass, please. Thank you. And for this guy, for these side ones, we want to do lime slashed local metal like this and like this. Okay, there we go. And you know what? Actually, before we fill in our roof, let's fill in our bottom with the brass slashed local metal like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just mimic the other daisy over there. We're going to go one two leaded glass, two, oh, one glass, two, two glass, one. So one, two, two, one, two, two, one. So again, one, two, 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 one, Wait, 
I already messed it up. <laughs> Boop, one, two, two, one, two, two, one. There we go. Perfect. We're gonna come in here now. What we wanna do is we wanna place down temporary blocks all the way down through here. And all the way down through here. The reason that we're doing temporary blocks all the way down through there like that is because we're going to make a special roof. This is a new type of roof. We haven't done this yet. We're going to run copycat boards all the way down the side. Like this. Perfect. Then we're going to enter. Oh. So we actually need these doors to face in like this when you open. There we go. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove these temporary blocks. Once we have the boards placed on either side, we do. Perfect. We're going to take our copycat boards, run them all the way down the temporary blocks that you placed on the roof. And what we're doing here is we're building the roof. This might seem tedious and this might seem like an annoyingly daunting task, and it is, but it's going to look really good in the end. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to right click those boards onto the um, boards that you just placed. So that way we have one cohesive roof and then you're going to come out and you're going to go ahead and just get rid of that outer board. And we're going to replace it with our brass wrapped local metal. Let me show you what that looks like from here. So we're just going to replace or we're going to fill those in like that and we'll be getting rid of that outer shell like that. Now that we've done that, we can get rid of our temporary block roof and we're going to do something cool. We're going to grab a piece of light gray local metal and a piece of gray local metal. We're gonna go one, two, three, three. So just basically every other line of boards is going to be a different type of local metal. Starting on the outside with the light gray and then doing a row of gray that's going to give you the illusion of those divots that she has on the roof or those little ribs or humps, whatever you want to call it. And that's that's it. That's literally Daisy right there. The only thing you need to do is grab yourself a couple of train controllers. We'll place one there and we'll place one there. And we're going to grab a seat. I'm going to go with black. Just because, eh, why not? Place yourself one right there for the driver's seat. And then to simulate passenger service, place a row all the way down through here. So that way your friends can sit and look out either window or either side for the windows. Unfortunately, there isn't room to go side to side. If you come up with a different way, to do that, I suppose you probably could just run a line of boards down and do the same thing with the boards we just did with the roof, but kind of right through here. It would stick out a little bit. You'll see if you'll see it when you try it. You'll see what I mean. Um, but yeah, that is going to be Daisy right there in a nutshell. And uh, perfect. Any if you have any questions, make sure you leave those questions for me in the comments below. Oh. 
I'm not sure if anybody noticed this or if you're in the comments screaming at me, hey, you messed this up. You just made this whole speech about how Daisy's supposed to, Daisy's face is supposed to go this way and then you didn't do it. Well, guess what? You can delete that hate comment right now because, hey, haha! <laughs> Boop. And when you actually need to replace, or we actually need to copy the same design that we did down here um, on both sides. So we want our yellow concrete. There we go. So now we have a static front and a static back to Daisy. And Bob's your uncle. All right. If you like the video, please like the video. If you dislike the video, please dislike the video. That being said, I do appreciate each and every single one of you. You are amazing. Even if you're telling me till you're blue in the face that you hate the way this thing looks and it doesn't look exactly the way you hoped it would. All that stuff. It's great. Comment. Do the thing. Like. Share. Subscribe. Everything. I love y'all. Okay, I'll be bye. In one of my previous videos, though, someone actually did request that I show at the end of the tutorial the locomotive in action. So, hey, here we go. We're, dri we're driving Daisy. We're driving Miss Daisy. OMG, I've made a pun. Look at that. When you go to glue Daisy, just glue Daisy as one solid glue. It's one solid glue. There's only two bogeys. It's easy. All right, cool. That's it. Okay, love you, bye. Good evening, everybody. My name is Bubby Craft, and tonight we're building Boko. As you can see here, we have ourselves a Boko, and we have a pretty cool little setup on the inside here. There are, there's just one thing that you need in order to be able to build your Boko, and that's a, another copy of Daisy. So I'm going to give you a second here to build up a second copy of Daisy or at least get to a certain point that I, um, where you have nothing filled in on your Daisy and we'll meet back here in just a second. All right, guys. So here we are with our disassembled Daisy. And what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be taking some things off of Daisy just to kind of make it easier to transition from Daisy into Boko. And those things are going to be just as you see what like I'm doing here. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we get rid of the ladders. We want to get rid of every piece of green just because we're going to be changing pretty much everything. And we want to place on a new um, half panel just like so. We're going to just focus from the front and move our way back. So what we want to do is we also want to get rid of those and essentially we're going to just start with placing down a copycat layer on the front of the train control, place down two lime slash local metal, and then just some more layers like so. What we want to do now is we want to click out three times or click out two more times on those layers. So that way you have the uh, face that we're going to, we'll call it face, but it's not really a face. Um, that way you have that uh, set down there. We're going to add in three temporary blocks and we're going to place on three more layers. And on these layers, we're going to click out once from those layers and remove our temporary blocks. Next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and grab a hold of a couple of copycat boards because we are going to want to use those boards and again we're going to place down you know what place down three temporary blocks right there and just keep those on there for a quick second we want to go ahead and place down three boards on either side there, we're going to place down our leaded glass. And in the middle is just going to be our regular glass. And then we're going to come inside and we're going to start building our interior of Boko. Since we now have what we need as far as 
um, our temporary blocks and everything um, set and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy down the train controls as well as the seat. And we want to grab a seat since I did not take that one with us. And we want the white local metal. So we're going to grab just the slashed local metal. And what we're going to do is we're going to place down two white local metal. And you might as well just delete these seats as well. You're not going to need them. So we're going to take out the white or tip, put down two white local metal. And then um, what we want to do is we want to also grab the copycat stairs. And we're going to place two copycat stairs. You can fill them with whatever blocks you want. Um, our inside block also does not matter. So we're going to just use some more white local metal. We're going to place a seat down on either side there. And then a train controls right in the middle. Um, so another thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is coming outside. And we want to grab a copycat board and we're going to place down. Oh, you know what? Actually, no, I apologize. We want copycat. Uh, copycat, what are they called? No, copycat layer? Yeah, copycat layer. That's the one. So we want to start placing copycat layers all the way down Boko's ceiling here, Boko's roof, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to create the shape of our roof. As you can see here, we have our standard roof size, like so. Two on either side and three in the middle. Oops. So we're going to go ahead and fill these in. While I'm doing this, I just want to take a minute to say thank you all so much for the amazing support that you always provide on the videos that I put out. Your comments are super fun to read and engage with, and I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you like my content, make sure you subscribe um, and dislike the video. If you dislike the video, dislike the video. You know, that's really all there is to it. Um, in the meantime here though, moving back along here to Boko, what we want to do is we want to grab a copycat slice and we're going to place one slice. Oh, you know what? Oh, whoops. We forgot one specific thing. We want to remove these now and we're going to grab the boards, the copycat boards rather. Before we do that, we're going to place the window material into our hotbar so we can now replace those like that because we want the windows sitting in one block. So then we can place one slice there, one slice there, and a slice in the middle, but we want the slice in the middle to be a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to grab the lime slash local metal and just start filling this in. So you can see we've kind of built the almost dome shape on the windows and the leaded the not having leaded glass in the middle also gives a little bit of a dome shape. And I think it's kind of neat. We're going to grab the light gray riveted local metal, place those along the inside there. The uh, in the middle of the roof, I just kind of did a little bit of a design. Nothing special. You can have the interior of your roof look however you want. It is your roof. Do whatever you please. Um, but you want to make sure that it looks a little bit matching just because Boko's roof, albeit it is a little bit of a mess, it is still from the pictures I should I see or I've seen I should say. 
It looks like it's a little bit messy with different bits and bobs, but given the limitations of Minecraft and everything, there's only so much that you can do. But your Boko should look like this so far. Perfect. So another thing I'd like to point out too is Boko does have a very distinctive coloring difference um, from Daisy. And what we want to do to accomplish that is we want to place down two pieces of crimsite on our half panels. And then we want to come underneath Boko, remove out those three um, stairs, and place down three copycat upside down stairs with whatever color red you choose, just to kind of give Boko a distinctive red coloring. We also want to make sure that we grab a different um, bogey to place down for Boko. That bogey is that I used was the triple axle and I went with the, uh, the radial. Okay, once you start filling your Boko in with green, you might be wondering, well wait, how did you get that cool separation there? Well, that's a good question. What I did was I just went inside with a copycat board and I placed the copycat board down on the inside there. And that gives you that little bit of a distinction between the two of them. And it kind of just looks neat. Um, another thing that I did was I used a different variation of slashed local metal um, and um, riveted local metal on the sides of Boko just to create a little bit of a different design for how the side of Boko looks. And I did this plated local metal as well. And I just used the leaded glass windows for the leaded glass. For the grate, I went ahead and did the sides like that. And then I just filled in a bunch of spaces with the slashed local metal all the way down to where the new doors are going to be. And yes, you are going to want to put the copycat doors back one space in this case, just because um, Boko's doors from in, in my interpretation of where they go, Boko's doors do go back just a little bit further. And then I have them so that they're opening out this way just to kind of give a little bit of a separation as well. I don't know, it's it's up to you, however you want to do it. Um, but we're through a little bit of, through a little bit of editing magic, we're gonna put the back exactly the way the front is. I also want to take a second here to call out that the back, when you're doing the back, is just gonna be slightly different. We've got the layers here, they only go out twice in, in total, and then the top layer here only goes out once. We're still going to do the same thing where the uh, windows sit in just one, just in case you wanted to change your mind. If you changed your mind and you wanted to put something up on that side, you totally can. It's just something that you can do. Um, the doors, I've made uh, just the riveted local metal. But essentially, that's your Boko complete. Make sure you add some ladders. And you can change the fuel tanks to be a different color if you want. I believe Bokos were green. Um, but I don't know, I kind of like them black just because it contrasts against the amount of green that's already on Boko. Um, but there you go. That is how you build Boko. Through, um, you know, kind of a little bit of a transition from our daisy which we see over here into boko down here honestly out of the two of them i feel like boko looks better just because it's a little boxier i don't have to worry about the slants or the sloping that daisy had daisy's a little bit more elegant sure but you know it is what it is um something else that you can do if you absolutely wanted to um, you can come in with some boards, the copycat boards, and you can actually place down boards along the um, the roof like we did, or you can go through and change those 
board colors to whatever you want. On my Boko, I did them as green. Um, just so that way there's a, a different color roof in there. I don't know, just a thing you can do. It's up to you guys. It's your model, make it however you want. Um, but I also, I wanted to go ahead and build something else. And let's go ahead and pop over there and do that. All right, in here for take two or part two of our build, we're gonna be building Trevor the Traction Engine. One of the cool parts about Trevor here is that you can actually drive him on kind of what looks like a farmland. But you'll notice that we still stop just as if we would on train tracks. And I'm going to show you how to do that. This is a way to make yourself um, any kind of vehicle in create as well. And that's through the use of what's called a phantom train track. You'll notice when I have it in my hand, I can see the tracks that are laid down. But if I take it out of my hand, it's completely hidden. See, in my hand or in my off hand, remove it from my hand and the tracks disappear. You can actually also relocate Trevor onto regular tracks. Have him face whichever direction you want. And uh, yeah, he kind of just does his own thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build a traction engine. And I'm going to show you how. And it's actually really cool. So first things first, what we want to do is I want to place down an, a station here and a station here. So I can go ahead and get Trevor into build mode as well as build another one. So that's what I like to do is I build a Trevor or I build the build alongside you guys. All right, what we want to do first is we want to grab ourselves um, a, let's see, we'll start in the back here. We want to grab a casing and we want to set it to the invisible and just place that down. From there, we have our invisible casing. And I don't know if you'll be able to see unless I go down here like this. Oh, that's right, casing's up here. So from our casing, what we wanna do is, with Trevor in build mode, we wanna grab ourselves a copycat headstock, place that down on either side, and we'll fill that in with the green brass wrapped green local metal. And we want a piece of the same thing, or copper wrapped local metal right there. We want the same thing. We're gonna grab a piece of the riveted local metal, the flat green riveted local metal and place that behind there. Oh, whoops. We want our train casing to go right behind that. And we're gonna go ahead and place down underneath that train casing, our train controls, just like so. Grab ourselves a back seat, place that down. A set of copycat stairs is gonna go up like this. And then we want a copycat layer, just because it's a lot thinner. We'll grab some coal for the texture. And there you go, you've got the coal bunker and everything. So we're starting to come together here. Uh, we want to place a... I feel like that's too much. One, two... Three? Is that right? One, two, three. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So there we go. We want to do that. And we're going to grab the copycat layer. And just right behind 
the headstock, we're going to extend that layer out one, like so. Oh, you know what? I apologize. That's going to go out two. And that's just going to kind of give us a little bit of a shape to Trevor here. And then we're going to grab our copycat slice. And this copycat slice is just going to come out three on either side, like so. And we're going to grab a copycat bite. Just place that copycat bite kind of pretty much wherever you want, really. Um, I did it right there just because, I don't know, it seemed right. We'll grab the grass support. Place that in. That kind of that's kind of like the steam whistle for Trevor, if you will. Now, bear in mind you can't actually add a whistle to Trevor, unfortunately, but it's okay. We're gonna also grab ourselves a fluid pipe with a bracket, like a so. A copycat step right there. The steel casing from the factory must grow. A copycat beam that we're going to place right in the middle. A smokestack on top of that. A copycat shaft underneath that. Like that. A copycat fluid pipe underneath there with a bracket attached to it. And then a copycat cogwheel on either side with some sort of black and some sort of red to create Trevor's front wheels. Once you have that basic shape down, we're going to gra grab the cast iron flywheels. Place those cast iron flywheels and Bob's your uncle, you are almost done. We're gonna grab a kitchen hood pipe. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna place that kitchen hood pipe down. And off to the back of that, we're gonna place a copycat board filled with that lime local metal. And then we're just gonna wrap this board with slices all around sides here and the reason we're doing that is because Trevor has like this almost I don't, I don't know what it's called maybe it's a traction wheel I don't know really what that is but it's like a gold wrapped green wheel right there and then to get the pipe to face in like that, the handcrafted mod has its own hammer. It's this big white hammer like that. Right click the pipe once and it bends it in to face that traction wheel, which is what I'm calling it. So there we go. That is your Trevor. Oh, and make sure you glue. That's right too. Make sure you glue your locomotives. I've done enough of these two these tutorials where I've just started to assume that you guys know that you glue the engines at the end. If you don't glue the engine at the end, this is what's going to happen. You try to take it out of build mode, and it's going to say that you need to attach at least full, one forward-facing train controls, or are you missing super glue? So always make sure that you glue your contraptions at the end, or your trains, whatever you want to call them. Um, I don't always put that in the video because I assume that you guys know by now that you glue the locomotive when you're done. But yeah, there we go. We've made Boko and we've made Trevor the Traction Engine in today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, again, thank you all so much for being here and for all the support that you've given on the other videos. Um, and you know, please like, comment, share, subscribe all the stuff and things, and uh, we will catch you next week um, for our next mystery character unveiling and so on. This Saturday will be the second episode in the RWS series. Stay tuned for that as well. 
I'm also almost done working out the kinks for a survival series. And if you haven't been paying attention in the live streams, then you might notice that uh, Farquhar is missing. Check out the live streams to find out why. And uh, yeah, you you might also be surprised that there's a an update on the map release. Stay tuned, guys. For now, you know what time it is. Okay, love you. Bye. Do you like the create mod? Do you also like Crafty Fox and building Crafty Fox builds? But wish that there was a way to put them into the create mod so that your Crafty Fox Thomas could drive just like your other Thomas? Well, look no further. I have the solution. Hello, everybody. My name is Bobby Craft. And today we're going to be upgrading the Crafty Fox Thomas into the Create mod. Come with me and let's get started. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is have yourself a Crafty Fox build. And what I've done here is I've built the uh, tutorial. I've went through the tutorial that he sent me. And um, this is the... the finished product, if you will, of the tutorial for Thomas. I'll put the link to this video's description, or to, I'll put the link to this video in the description down below. We need to do a couple of things differently in order to make this Thomas work on the create mod though. First things first, unfortunately we have to get rid of the banners. Banners do not work on create mode contraption or create on the create mod contraptions next thing we need to do is we need to get rid of those carpets and the pistons unfortunately pistons that are activated do not work as in a contraption either so what we're doing is we're just replacing those pistons with the red concrete and we're going to go into the Steam and Rails mod, and we're going to grab the Big Buffers. And just place down Big Buffers in the place where the pistons were extended. These buffers will stick to a Create Mod contraption. And will make Thomas look like he still has his buffers. Now, how do we do the number one because that is what makes Thomas Thomas for that we're gonna reach into the copycats plus mod and we're gonna grab ourselves a copycat bite and what we're gonna do is where we had our banner we're going to remove these blue blocks right here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna place down you know what, just to be safe, let's remove those instead. So we have a bigger number one. We're going to place down a backing. Oops. A backing first. Let's place down just a bunch of copycat bites. Give yourself a nice little cave to work with. Because as you saw, when you place them down like this and you've, you've made a mistake, if you delete it, it's just going to delete the whole block. So if you want all of those filled in, place this L shape first and then fill them in with the light blue concrete. And then place your second layer. Now we've got this giant L. So what I did with my experimentation, I just grabbed yellow wool and we're going to just place yellow wool just like that. Now we have a number one. Look at that. Thomas has a number one. We're going to repeat the same thing on this side making sure that we have the exact same blocks. But this time, 
we're going to make a backwards L. Place down our same copycat bytes as before. Fill those in. Another thing you can do too is you can have the blue concrete in your offhand and just place down those bytes like that. Awesome. Now we're going to fill this in with the bytes without a color so that we don't accidentally make a mistake. And we're going to place... Oh, you know what? We're going to accidentally realize that we've placed down the wrong spots here. But it wouldn't be a Bubby Craft tutorial if I didn't make some sort of mistake. So in this case, we have a much larger area for our number one. We're just going to fill in the rest of this stuff with our blue concrete. And now we have a number one on both sides of Thomas. Excellent. The next thing that we want to do is we want to come down here to the wheels and we want to remove those blocks. So again, that was this block this block, this block, this block, and this block. And we want to do that on the front there, on the front wheel, and then we want to do that on the back wheel. The reason we want to do that is because we're going to be placing um, what are called bogies onto our tracks in order for Thomas to sit on those bogies and be able to move. We're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Again, just for the front and the back wheels. And there we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab what's called a schematic and quill. This is from the create mod. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna right click any block if you're in creative mode, just start flying and you'll see this blue block, blue box appear around Thomas. And what we're going to do is we're going to start our blue box on this first red piece of concrete. And we're going to end our blue box right here on this piece of light blue concrete. We're going to stand or fly or hover at the back of Thomas. And we're going to hold shift and spacebar at the same time so that we stay in the air and we've still got the shift button placed or crouch. And then you're just going to take your mouse wheel and pull it, pull your mouse wheel towards you. You see how that box gets bigger and comes towards you? That's what we're looking for. The same thing happens on either side. You can grow or shrink the box on all the sides that you wish including the top. Once you have that completed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just come down to any side of Thomas, break a couple blocks in front of us, and do the same thing. Shift and pull the mouse wheel towards us on the bottom so that we get the bottom of the schematic. Once you have that, box completed all the way around your build, you're going to right click and it's going to bring up a schematic name. You can type anything here. And once you have that typed, once you have your schematic named, you can just literally name it whatever you like. You could name it Thomas, whatever you wish. You're going to click the save button. And it's going to tell you down at the bottom in those white letters that Thomas was saved. Okay, for our next step, what we're going to need is some rails placed down, or some train track. 
So just place yourself down some train track. I made myself a little oval. And we're going to grab the train station block. And we're going to right click anywhere on the track and just place that train track down. Next, we're going to right click the train station and select create a new train. From there, we're going to go over to the schematic table and you're going to place an empty schematic inside of the inside of the um, the thing over here. Actually, we'll just grab an empty one so you can see what it looks like. So you place an empty schematic over here and you'll just search through your list and find your schematic. Once you have your schematic selected, you'll just click the check mark here and it's going to shoop through here and come out the other side looking like this. You'll place the schematic in your hand and right click anywhere in the world and it will place a ghost version of that schematic, one that you can pass through, that sort of thing. It's going to place the schematic exactly how you copied it. So in our case, Thomas is facing that way. So Thomas is going to be facing that way as well. We're going to hold down the left alt button because that's the default button when using the schematics. When you hold down the left alt, you see how that bottom window gets a little bit darker and fills in. And you can use your mouse wheel to go through and select the different um, different things that you need. So we're going to click rotate. Or we're going to select rotate, I should say. And by selecting it, I mean you just move your mouse butt, your mouse wheel and leave it on rotate, let go of alt, and it's on rotate. In order to get it to rotate, you're going to crouch and move your mouse wheel and Thomas will rotate. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to stand in front of Thomas. We're going to make sure that we've selected the move XZ, crouch, and we're going to scoot Thomas back just a little bit. The reason that we want to do that is because what we want to try and do is we want to place down a train wheel so that way we know exactly where we're going. So we're going to grab a train casing, push the left alt button again to open up the train casing menu. We're going to choose the comically large wheel, click the check mark, and right click on the wheel on that little blue space. And what that did was it placed down a wheel for us. So we're going to go back to our schematic and we're going to crouch and we're just going to pull Thomas over top of that wheel. And we'll see here how we've got the first part of the front wheel placed right where we need it to go. And what we're going to do is just make sure that we're facing left and right correctly. Come over to the other side, just make sure that our wheel is placed in there. And perfect. What we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the print side and we're going to shift and click. You might be wondering, why does it look like there's a banner there and why are there pistons? I wanted to show you what happens when you make your build without replacing the banner and without replacing the pistons. So we're going to right click while holding shift or holding crouch. Oh, sorry, we're not going to hold crouch. We're just going to right click to print. And that's going to place down our build. And I forgot, I have the setting turned on where it removes blocks. So we're just going to place down another wheel. And now we've got Thomas 
with this first wheel. So up to this point, this, is sh this should be where you are. Remember, I am just showing you what happens when you place down as just a schematic with the banners and the pistons. Your schematic should have Thomas with our number one that we've redesigned, as well as the buffers if you're using the Create Steam and Rails mod, and if you're using the Create Copycats Plus mod. Coming back over to our Thomas, we're going to go ahead and grab another wheel and making sure that our wheel is going to be right in the middle. Remember in the Crafty Fox tutorial, this last stone brick stair was on the right side of the last wheel and this prismarine brick stair was the middle of the last wheel. You're going to hover your mouse over that track that's right below the prismarine brick stair and you're just going to right click and that's going to place another wheel. One thing that you can do if you have the extended bogies mod you can place down three wheels like this and there is the ability to unlink the bogies if, they're, if you can actually get in there which I can't get in there right now without destroying Thomas. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just move this, move this with an empty hand. We're going to shift and it doesn't work with the large bogeys. Okay, so never mind. All right, so we're going to place back down our wheel. going to grab our stone brick stairs and on my version I've still got the or I took off the um, bottom of the middle wheel as well thinking that I could test it and see if it works and it does not so we're just gonna rebuild our wheel there we go all right from here Another cool thing that you can do to your Thomas is you can actually give him a whistle. So once you have your schematic placed down and you've got your wheels, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a fluid tank from the create mod and a whistle from the create mod. We're going to come up here and we're going to remove this oak fence gate as well as that piece of um, light blue concrete. We're going to place down the fluid tank and then the whistle on top of it. You're going to take your create wrench and click your whistle twice to give us the smallest whistle that we have available to us. Next thing we want to do is we want to come in the cab. We're going to grab a train control and a seat. You can grab any color seat that you have available to you. You don't need to add, install mods to place down a bunch of different seats. But Create does come with a bunch of different colors to choose from. And there are other mods that you can um, install that do add different seats and decorative blocks. Now we're going to place down our train control right here in front of the firebox and then our seat right behind it. And our last step is we're going to grab some glue. What we're going to do here 
is we're going to place down a couple of temporary blocks. We want to put a temporary block in the front and then to the right. And what we're doing here is we're going to start our glue from right here, similar, like, similar to what we did with the schematic and quill. But we're going to start our gluing from right here before we actually do the gluing we're going to place another temporary block here move it back so that it goes past the buffers and then up so that it goes above the level of the roof and the smokestack so we're going to right click our temporary blocks and bring the glue line all the way to our other temporary block now we're going to remove our temporary blocks and Thomas is glued now to show you again what happens when you have a banner and pistons that are extended or activated through redstone to finish Thomas, we're going to right click the station and we're going to come down here and click assemble train. See what happens? The banners fly right off, but the pistons stay. Now watch what happens when we actually drive Thomas. So our next step is we can right click the seat and sit, right click the train control, push F5 to zoom out, be able to see what you're doing, and you can start driving. You see what happens? Thomas just drives off, and there's parts left behind. Now, the way to fix that, if you accidentally don't glue Thomas the way that I did, you make a mistake, you add back on your wheels, and you want to get things glued the best way to fix that is just to drive back to where you were make sure that you see you see that little box down there that says hold space to approach track station what we're going to do is we're going to hold the space button and it's going to put thomas back exactly where he was so we're going to right click the station disassemble the train Grab our glue, right click our blocks that we're missing, and make sure to connect those blocks. And just for illustrative purposes here, to show you once more, we're going to grab grab the glue back right click our missing pieces and drag that box up right click again and now our missing pieces are attached to Thomas no matter what you do right clicking the piston dragging it over here attaching it to anything else it does not matter what you do that piston because it's extended will not stay Another cool thing, I just want to go ahead and showcase this right here. This banner that he made is absolutely amazing. Just the ingenuity of that alone is, it's just perfect. The number one, I, I just, I love it. I love it. So I'm going to make a quick cut here and we're going to replace this Thomas with that Thomas so you can see what it looks like fully completed. One thing that I did forget to share when placing a schematic, if you go to the move Y, you can make the t you can make your schematic move up and down. I do want to just also make a quick note that these train tracks are called the wide dark oak train tracks. When you're selecting your tracks, you'll have a bunch of different options available to you through the Steam and Rails mod. You'll have just the regular train track in create, of course, and you'll have the narrow gauge create. Um, I believe there's a narrow gauge create. 
something I don't know you'll you'll figure that part out on your own but you what you're gonna want to be selecting is the wide versions so make sure that it says wide when you're selecting because the wide version allows you to use the comically large uh, bogey so now that we've got our Thomas placed and everything's done and he's assembled we're going to come in and just show you a couple of shots here of Thomas driving around. You might be thinking to yourself, you placed on a whistle, how do you use it? Well, while you're driving, just push the shift button or the crouch button. Well, I should say for me, it's the left shift button. For you, if you push your, your crouch button, you're going to stop controlling the locomotive. So I don't know what button it would be for you. For me, it's the left shift. Um, it might be your control button. I don't know. But there is a way to do the whistle. And if you know how to do it, if it's not left shift, uh, let me know in the comments below. But make sure to thank Crafty Fox in the comments. I had reached out to him to see if he'd like to do a collaboration. And this is what he said we would do. So here you go. If you like the video, like the video, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Good evening, everybody. My name is Bubby Craft, and tonight we're building Mavis. So let's get cracking. We want to make sure that we have a create. Uh, large style 060 bogey for starters and then we're gonna just place down all of our pieces real quick making a little bit of a base this is a different kind of base than we're normally used to with our creations just because we're normally using a slab this time we're gonna be using a full block. All right, perfect. So that is step one. Step two is going to be, we are gonna grab a copycat board and we're gonna run said copycat board. And here, you know what? We're gonna do this. We're gonna run a copycat panel all the way along here to help us with pla the placement of these boards. Okay. There's that. Perfect. Might as well just get the cab over and done with first. So place your temporary copycat panels with your boards behind it, along with the polished coal block to finish it off. Then we're going to take a copycat half panel with white logo metal inside of it, place that right underneath the window. And then we're going to run a cop that same copycat half panel, three of them just along the side of Mavis, just like so. And we're gonna copy everything on this side and be right back. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing for our back. Just running up temporary copycat panels, grabbing our copycat boards, and placing some copycat boards down and remove our temporary panels. For this, in my mod pack, we have the Builder's Delight mod. 
that's going to give the industrial block that looks um, pretty close to Mavis's back end. I just wish that there was a way to rotate the texture. If anybody knows of a way to do that and um, you know rotate the texture, then I would use. I would probably find a way to do copycat blocks or bytes or whatever they're called in the back here, just to be able to get that correct texturing. Um, but I don't think it's possible. I've done. Lots of scouring and searching and haven't been able to find anything, so I don't think it's possible, but who knows, it could be. We're going to place our ladders to get inside of Mavis there. And what we're going to do now is something that might be a little bit controversial and that some of you I know don't like to do. But we're going to place down three copycat slopes. With the interior is the sheet netherite block. Just because it looked the best as far as that, um, the sheet metal is concerned. If you didn't want to use the sheet netherite, you could use the industrial iron. Because if you're doing this in survival mode, sheet netherite is going to be extremely expensive. Whereas the industrial iron is not very expensive at all. Let's go ahead and grab our couplers and buffers. We want to place these on the bottom half of the block just so that it's closer to the uh, plow, the closer to the plows. All right, and then um, we're going to save the front for now. Let's grab some Polished cut crimsonite. Place those on there. Grab our seat in our train controls. And bada bing, bada boom. Mavis has a almost finished cab. We're gonna do the same thing that we did before and run some temporary copycat panels to place down some boards. Just like so. I'm honestly not sure why I just did that. But, hey, whatever. Oh, it might be because I had NBT data stored in there. There. That should have cleared that up, and it didn't, of course. I'm not going to pause the recording and come back just in case this happens to you guys. We can work out this problem together and kind of see what is what. Maybe we just don't use the copycat board that has the stored NVT data. And we just go in like those. Interesting. Wonder why it's doing that. That is really, really strange. It's not doing it on this Mavis. heck was wrong with it but I placed it I took it all apart and placed it all down again and it seemed to be fine so I don't know 
it shouldn't do the same thing for you, so that's good news at least. Anyway. Moving forward here. We're gonna just pop that off. Grab some of this. Place down our next set of blocks. And then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna grab a copycat slab. And we're gonna place those slabs like so. And then we want to grab a copycat step. And those copycat steps are just going to sit right up on top, like so. Now we want to grab a copycat layer. And we're going to place one, two, three, four, five. And uh, let's do six. No, let's do five. Is it five or is it six? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Um, okay, apparently it is six. Question everything. Anticipate nothing. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is color our top steps in the polished black coal. And our side grills are gonna be the simple coal pillar. And you're just going to click once, twice, three times to get it to turn sideways, and then the other two will follow suit and go sideways for you. Next thing we want to do is we want to grab a copycat slab, place that down, and I did the white steel on the inside, but you can do whatever you want. Our next contestant is going to be a couple of vertical slices with the color inside striped yellow concrete. What is this? Is this just a normal block? It is just a normal block. Wait, what? Oh, my Lanta. Oh, that changes some things. Oh, it only changes, it changes nothing. Never mind. There we go. So we're gonna use the yellow caution block there from the factory must grow. And then we're gonna grab a copycat slab and place one copycat slab on either side. And our copycat slabs are gonna have the caution blocks instead of the yellow concrete so that everything is all copacetic and connected. And then we're gonna place a copycat slab on either side of that. And you should be right about here in your process. Fill in those two slabs with the black local metal of your choice. And then our coupler. And buffers are gonna go there. Grab us some polished crimsite, place those down, and Bob is almost your uncle. 
we're going to place down three, four, five, six. I believe that's six. Just enough to where it looks like it's one pixel above what we're going to place next. Which is a couple of copycat bites. So we are a little bit too tall. So we want to go like this one, two, three, four, five. That's what we want. And we want to grab the yellow concrete. Okay. I guess we're having a problem tonight with copycats and their stored NBT data. So there we go. All right. Next thing we want to grab is the wood burner smokestack and right click it so it turns it off and then place on top of that the coal burner smokestack and it gives you kind of a little bit of a domed um domed funnel-ish looking um smokestack there so it's a little bit a little bit unique and a little bit different and that sort of thing perfect Last but not least, we want to go ahead and grab a set of copycat layers. Let's just clear the palette completely. Copycat layers, copycat slices, and copycat headstock, along with the black riveted logo metal. So let's just set down a roof real fast. There we go. Place our slices down. And let's grab the deep slate tile that we normally use for the roof. And there we go. Polish off by placing our copycat half panels and Mavis is basically done. One thing that we want to make sure that we do is we want to come down here, place a layer of blocks. Like so. Break two of them. And similar to what we did with Toby, where we had to come through and go completely underneath the rail, we're gonna go around to the back side, or all the way around through to the back side, and so on. And we're just going to locate the bottom of the um, local metal piece that we put down. And we're going to place down our copycat headstocks. Oops. Like this. Make sure you, so you make yourself a way out. There we go. Perfect. Now we're going to come out and then realize that we put these on on the wrong way. But you know what? Have no fear. We have a way to fix that. And it's actually a really easy way to fix that. We need the, oh, what's it called? The debug tool. All right, so if you were like me, you didn't see the operator utilities tab, 
what you do is you go into options, controls, turn the operator items tab on. We're going to come into the operator utilities, grab the debug stick. We're going to left click until we see selected upside down true. We're going to right click then on all of these and it's going to place them exactly where we want them to go, which is upside down according to or right side up according to our debug stick. And then we want to go ahead and place inside of those copycat headstocks the black rivet of local metal as a way to kind of distinguish and texture all kinds of stuff and things. And that's what we want to do. Um, so you can do it the way I did it here too, where you have the um, copy head, head socks on the outside. And to do that, you would just place uh, copy head, head stocks on top of those and color those in however you'd like to do it. For the purposes of our tutorial here today, I'm just showing you both ways to do this. Alright, and at the time of recording this, there is an, a bug, or I'm sorry, there is a bug inside of the Copycats Plus mod where if you wanted to add doors to the either side here, which would make Mavis look more like Mavis, that would probably be ideal. But every single time you put Mavis into build mode, not only will she break these rails on either side there, but the doors disappear. The, the rails breaking is going to be normal because we're placing blocks where the rails, where the rail center is. So it's going to destroy those rails no matter what. And it's going to just have to be something that you get used to with this because it is something that will happen every single time. Um, but there you go. That is how you build Mavis in Minecraft. And uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of Mavis in action here in just a second. Hey, this is actually Editor Bubby here. I want to just take a second here just to remind everybody to please glue your trains. We've done so many of these tutorials that I've just stopped including the gluing step inside of the, you know, the tutorials because you have to glue your trains before you put them together. Everything is, whoops, everything is uh, separated by blocks, in other words. Um, so if, if we were to glue Mavis, for example, we would start here at the... Um, well, first of all, we've just placed down a block. We'd place the block here, we'd start the glue here, and we would place a block right about here, um, and make sure that we get all of the glue, or all of the pieces of Mavis inside of that gluing area. Now, in the case of like Edward or Gordon, or someone that has a tender, you make sure that you glue the locomotive part first, and you glue the tender part separately. At no point should those two glue boxes intersect, and you shouldn't have any problems. Extended bogies and steam and rails both don't allow more than three, I'm sorry, more than two bogies on a single contraption. And uh, yeah, that's just uh, my two cents, and I appreciate you listening. Thanks, everybody. All right, here we are. Another thing you can do is on the front of your Mavis, you can add those uh, same ladders that you use for the back sides. And then I've just been adding copycat slices onto my locomotives on the front, just to kind of give it a little bit of a little extra detail. You know, just simple little things to make your builds pop, that sort of thing. Um, I've got the... Where I am right now is inside of the Farquhar Quarry, which is a new addition to the Sodor map project. If you haven't been following along um, the, on the streams and everything, then you are definitely missing out on how the project is progressing and everything. So make sure you hang out on, come hang out sometime on the streams, 
so you can see how things are going and that sort of thing. Um, I do want to just note that it probably will be a little bit difficult to uh, couple and uncouple cars to Mavis because of the um, files on the front and on the back. I'll work. I'll try to work on something on how to change that, make it a little bit different or whatever. But in the meantime, you know, stay tuned. Check out the live streams for updates and everything. And uh, this has been how to build Mavis in Minecraft. And I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you like the video, please like the video. If you want to share, comment, follow, dislike, anything else, please do. Uh, let me know how, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like about the build. You know, just be nice, that sort of thing. Um, but I've been really enjoying reading everybody's comments and replying as much as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys in the live streams. Until then, thanks very much and okay, love you, bye! Good evening, everybody. My name is Bobby Craft, and tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you a little special treat that I've cooked up tonight just for you. And, you know, due to copyright restrictions and, and conditions and certain things like that, I can't actually use any of the correct music. So you're just going to have to live with the music that I put here in the video. But I figured I would try this out and see how this sounds. And uh, here we go. Bubby Craft presents a Thomas tale. Thomas and Percy are good friends, but sometimes Percy teases Thomas about being frightened, and he doesn't like that at all. One evening, he was dozing happily in the shed, but Percy wanted to talk. Wake up, Thomas. Are you dreaming about the time you thought I was a ghost? Certainly not. Anyway, I was only pretending to be scared. I knew it was you, really. Percy went on, teasing him. Oh, I do hope the guard leaves the light on for you tonight. Why? asked Thomas. I quite like the dark. Oh, really? exclaimed Percy. I am surprised. I thought you always were afraid of the dark. I wonder why. Thomas decided to say nothing and went to sleep instead. The next day, the Fat Controller arrived. I would like you to go to the harbor tonight to collect something rather unusual. What sort of something? asked Thomas. Wait and see. Percy was moving the trucks into a siding. Henry arrived with his goods train. The signalman switched the points, and Percy waited on the siding until Henry had steamed by. Then there was trouble. The points are jammed, called the signalman. I can't switch them back. The workmen will mend them in the morning. It's too late now. Hmm, said Percy's driver. I'm sorry, Percy, but you'll have to stay here for the night. Where are you going? asked Percy. Home for tea, replied the fireman. Nighttime came, and Percy began to feel very lonely. Oh, dear he murmured. It's very dark. Shh. Oh, Shh. oh, what's that? Shh. It was only an owl, but Percy didn't realize this. Shh. I wish Thomas was here too, he sighed. Thomas was waiting for his mysterious load at the harbor. Suddenly, there it was. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. It's a dragon! Don't worry, <laughs> laughed his driver. This dragon is made of paper. It's for the carnival tomorrow. Workmen lifted the dragon onto Thomas's load loader and put lights all around it for protection. Then Thomas set off into the misty night. Percy was asleep in his siding and had no idea that Thomas was approaching him. Help! cried Percy. I'm not going to open my eyes until my driver comes. The next morning, the points were mended and Percy puffed back into the junction. Gordon was just about to leave with the express. You'll never guess what I saw last night, said Percy. 
Gordon was in no mood for puzzles. I'm a very busy engine. I don't have time for your games. But I've seen a huge dragon. It was covered in lights. <laughs> You've been in the sun too long. Your dome is cracked. When the other engines heard the news, they laughed too. Look out, Percy, or the dragon may gobble you up. No one believes me. Maybe I did imagine the dragon after all. But Percy soon found out that he hadn't. Help! Save me! cried Percy. It's all right, whistled Thomas. And he explained about the carnival. By the way, how was your night out? asked Thomas. Percy decided to tell Thomas the truth. <laughs> well, Percy, said Thomas, maybe we do get scared sometimes, but if we're not afraid to tell each other, then that means we're quite brave too. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did making it. Um, special thanks to Matt the Gamer Train for acting as the stunt double slash body double slash train driver slash, uh, you know, whatever else I needed help with. Um, he definitely stepped up and helped out big time with the recreation of this episode. Um, and I hope you guys liked it. So if you wouldn't mind, please like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, uh, comment down below, um, and the schematic for Thomas and the Dragon Train will be released in my Discord uh, as soon as this video has gone live. So uh, we will go ahead and end things here. Um, as always, I've been Bobbycraft, and until next time, we will catch you later. Okay, love you, bye! Good evening, everybody. My name is Bobby Crafts, and I am with Imagineer Dave. Hello, 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 hello. How are and you doing? Tonight, we're going to be building something really cool. So let's get started and we'll see what we can do. Mm -hmm. All right, Dave. You show me the way. You show me the way. Uh, so, yeah, I figured um, you know, I'm just going to keep recording the entire time. And um, we're going to be building uh, your coaches with a little bit of my twist to it and um, a lot of people in my community have been asking for this build and I didn't feel comfortable doing it without the man who made it so that's what we're doing <laughs> I see I see I see yeah um it was actually funny because I think I made these because um I needed some small like uh older style sort of coaches mm -hmm. and the ones that i was referencing with my own design was also actually the ones from thomas so yeah they fit perfectly and that's the reason why i guess nice so yeah um i do the building you do the building what are we gonna do, um, we let's, do the building? Let's, yeah, let's have you do the building and i'll just kind of watch and it, try to exp um, we'll both try to explain things as we go if that's cool yeah yeah sure sure thing so mm -hmm. um I'm just grabbing some bogies. I don't know if you want the same ones, like the standard ones. Um, honestly, what this bogey looks a thousand times better already. So let's do that. Um, because I don't think there's a special bogey. Yeah, those are just standard bogies. So these look cool. Yeah, let's get the uh, get a little bit of a uh, uh, another one because if you hold, if you have steam and reels, I think, and you hold Alt right. Yep. You can actually scroll to double axle and then. This one that we'll be using is actually the one for uh, a, uh, a passenger wagon. Okay, perfect. Yep. So uh, they are spaced. Let me check, let me check, let me check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven apart. So okay. there's seven right in between, right? Okay. Uh, and for the middle ones, we're actually going to do a little bit of a different thing because in the middle, three blocks. Oh, sorry, remove the bogey. Oh, you're good. And then girders on either side, right? Yeah, and then, like, the girders are inside of that, yeah. Gotcha. Oh. So, oh, sorry. You get it? Yep, so I'll help. I'll yeah. help where I can kind of thing. Yeah, if you actually uh, work on that side, then I'll do the other. So, Perfect. here I have some slabs. Here, I'll, I'll give the slab to you. Okay. Uh, upside down, next to the side of that. 
Also, I think there's some glue left there from some something else. So oh, let me just yeah. remove that. Let me just remove that to be sure. Yeah. There we go. I literally, literally just finished building Gordon, so I, I, uh, oh, I see. thanks for catching that. <laughs> nah, nice, nice, nice. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. Um. Yeah, and then some uh, full ones that are over here, actually, too, on the side of the bogies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. the endings. Uh, no, one, one more in front. One more in front, I think. Like, here. Right? Yeah, and then at the end, there are stairs. Inside oh, stairs. Oh, okay. So it's a little bit different. Yeah, I think it's like that. And then, oh, in the end, in the middle, there's also this, apparently. Yeah, I... You see, sometimes when you make these wagons, you don't really think logically. You just start somewhere and just go on until it looks good. I yeah, guess. exactly. Like I, uh, I, uh, I think you had like uh, you were building some wagons last week, right? Some I new was. ones. Yep, they're over. On, they're over in the station right now. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah, and is that actually the same for you? Like when you start. Uh, making those, you just go at what looks nice and what doesn't, I guess? Or So it's a little bit different for me. Um, what I try to do is I look at a picture for what I'm building and I try to match details as much as possible to the picture and then I add my own flair to it once I have it built. So like if I was to take one of your locomotives, for example, I would build it 100% exactly the way you did based off of a photo from what i can tell and then i add my own flair to it kind of thing see. so that's see, see. that's how i'm teaching myself how to build in this uh create mod nice 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 so i see you're finishing up on that actual wagon over at the base and so you are way farther ahead <laughs> i no no no. i i already went like one step further but i think we can actually work on the the one right here so okay I, I like to build the first layer first and then slowly go upwards. I think that's the easiest, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so over at those full blocks, there's like the width of a step. You can either do that with four slices or just with a step, I guess, if you have those. Yep. Works both. Yep. Let me just do the other side for you. That works. Yeah, and on the end, just uh, actually the buffers. Yeah, I got those. And I think it's just to like up to everybody who wants to use like uh, also these to check out what kind of uh, links you want, I guess. Mm -hmm. I like to use the uh, screw link. Same. It's very British and it's very Sodor. Mm. <laughs> But yeah, I guess you could go for another style if you really wanted to. So, um, here you changed a little bit of my design, I think, uh, because you added some other actual textures at the bottom, right? Um, I don't know what it is. Which, which where? The uh, a riveted local metal, right? Oh, yeah. yep, yep, yep. I wanted it to just be um, black on the bottom, straight black on the bottom, just to match I the see. Annie and Clarabelle design there. And I see, I see. It looks really nice, actually. I yeah. like it. I might actually um, steal that for my own wagons again. Sure. So, yeah. That's uh, a good addition. Uh, okay. Okay. There we go. So, that's finished, right? Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So, what I like to do is um, line out where every wagon and everything goes. So, I get some seats. Okay. And for these wagons, um, the setup is like, it has three a door sort of a thing. And I think that's based off the uh, old English wagons, which also had three doors. I think mm -hmm. one for first class, second class, and third class in each one. So that's kind of what they're, yeah, uh, based off, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it's just some rows of seats. And then where you end up with the uh, actually filled in areas, that's going to be like the walking area and where the doors are. Right, right. Um, yeah, and then there are some spacer walls like right there in between. I think you were going to build them right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's, I guess, 
I guess, the basics. Okay. Uh, and then it's just like some layers and some doors, right? So a door, you can never have <laughs> on, actually, all of these copycats. So just have them inside, sadly enough. Yeah, I know. That's so silly. Yeah, I would love it to have a door outside of the uh, on, actually, the copycats. Because most of the times you have like these outside uh, layers, so mm -hmm. you get more room inside. Yep. And I think you went with panel. Oh, it's all layers. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's like one outside layer and then one from the inside towards that way. So you can have the uh, thing over there. So actually, uh, yeah, you need to move that one in front oh, of that. Like, inside there. layer. How did you do the inside layer? Well, just from the inside and then at the wall. Oh, at the wall. Oh, okay. Aim okay. at the wall like that. Um, yeah, yeah, be, ah. because what you then can do is actually like you see these little handrails over here. Yes. Actually, the golden ones. You can have the like outside area as that. Okay. So that's okay. why you do that, I guess. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, the ones over at actually the bottom, I would like to have them, uh, them to be the inside too, but you can't because the seats are already there. So that's sort of a way you can cheat around and add more little little areas and like handrails and things. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't. It's just up to uh, what it looks like, I guess. Well, I think it looks pretty fantastic. So I see you have some other windows with like shutters in them and I love them. Yeah, aren't those awesome? Yeah, like, like from which model are they? I think that came from Builder's Delight. Oh yeah, I see. I yeah, see. Builder's Delight, yep. They're really nice. Yeah, for those of you that don't know Imagineer Dave, definitely take a minute to go subscribe to his channel. I will put a link in the description of the video. Mm -hmm. um, he has got some awesome stuff and is either it's either quite possibly the largest functioning railroad in Crate or it is the function, largest functioning railroad in Crate, something like that. I don't so, know if it's the largest. Uh, I think it's maybe the most realistic most work. And most realistic. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like the largest, I don't think so, because I've heard others say, like, that their stations were, like, 500 long or something, and I was like, why? That's yeah, so long. That is, a, that is pretty long. But I must say, like, an engine with, like, really long wagons does look really cool. And I can't really have those because I don't have the length that you need for that mm -hmm. inside of my station. So. Yeah, but it's okay. You're on a you're on an SMP though, right? Yeah, it's 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 uh, <laughs> everything is made in survival, so I guess that mm -hmm. uh, yeah also doesn't really help out. Like the first thing I had to do on that server was dig up a whole mountain that was like a, a 70 high or something. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. The nice thing about it, though, you get like a lot of resources, I guess, from it. Mm -hmm. So that helps. Oh, for sure. Create mod can definitely be intimidating for some people, but it's also pretty fun as well once you get the hang of it. Yeah, it, um, it is actually really fun because it's sort of it isn't too easy but at the same time it isn't really hard or something mm -hmm. like you can make it as hard as you want i guess yeah that's the fun part about it um so uh that's the base shell i guess of this wagon yeah we just need the under uh, oh yeah you already have those panels underneath yeah Ooh. a couple of them oh. yep nice 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 there we go Oh, that's it for that part, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's like the shell, and now you can really see how 
the layout is of Sword of the Wagons. Mm -hmm. So it's like three areas with six seats in each of them. So, yeah. Um, on your original design, did you add the slices in the corners? No, I didn't. I didn't. This is ah. actually an uh, addition that's made by you, I think. Okay. And I it like must it. Be. So I guess you added that to sort of end off like the, I think the wagon, right? Yeah, I think so. Kind of just give it a little bit more of a, a sh like a square shape when I added in the, the curved roof. Well, curved yeah, to an extent. Yeah, and from here, it's like more your design. So now I need to look what I'm doing. Um... Yeah. So I've got a, cu a couple of different things. I did a line of um, copycat layers all the way through the middle. Oh. And I believe I went up by five on that, if I'm not mistaken, on the layer. They should really add that if you hold like uh, 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 the thing where you get like the entity uh, also, like actually the data. Yeah, for That they like also for include like the amount of uh, layers in that. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. That would be really nice. So it yep. does not only like remember what's inside of it, but also the amount of layers. Right. Oh, so you added like variants to it. I did, yeah. So I used the uh, white steel tank on the um, oh, I did roof as well. Did we make these? No, we didn't. Okay, so I went every other block. I did a white steel tank yep. as well. Yeah, so like that. Let me just up these layers for you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. And then I just kept repeating. Oh, goodness. Oh, you know, if you want to like have a seat already, you can, of course, but <laughs> you still have to finish the wagon, you know? Wouldn't let me out. There we go. Four and then three or two. Yeah, I believe it was uh, five, four, three. And then on the slice is just the, uh, two, or the slice is two. two. Ah, so five, four, three, two. Okay, I see. And then the slice goes all around, right? Yep, the slice goes all the way around, and yep, exactly, just like that. Oops. Let me work on this side, and then I'll skip over to the uh, other okay. carriage. but surely we're actually getting there uh, yeah. and then we have to glue it up of course still yeah and that's something that i have been forgetting to do in a lot of my videos so a bunch of my comments lately have been hey so i glued this and it's not working or i so i uh, built this and it's not working what am i doing wrong how did you glue it oh no what's gluing oh man <laughs> Yeah, I see. Like, for these wagons, I think the gluing is quite simple, luckily enough. But of course, uh, sometimes it can be really hard if you have, like, a multiple bogies. I think you had that on... Uh, uh, I think it's Gordon, right? Yep, it was Gordon that yeah. I was just actually having trouble with, and I managed to um, refigure out how I did it right before you joined me. And, um, Let's see. Yeah, it's a little bit of a weird tutorial but it's a glue somewhat gluing tutorial in the Gordon video. Glue, glue. <laughs> nice 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 <laughs> yeah it can be actually hard and of course when you just uh, start up with the game you don't know that you actually have to uh, do all of that you just see somebody else uh, building a wagon and then like hitting a button and it's done you know sort right. of thing Right, exactly. Um, another question: Do you still do you have these like hidden uh, con Ooh. controls in your wagons, or don't you? The hidden what controls? No. Yeah. No, no I actually don't. I took those out. I did see that you had one 
was it like the bottom like right here i believe yeah like mistaken. all the way in the bottom i think yeah mm -hmm. on the bottom and the front so it was a front facing um but i did take it out and um but at, for this one we can just do that and um then i can connect it up with somebody else one of the other characters and take it off or yeah I, yeah I see. we can yeah. honestly just glue these and leave them be and i can take care of them later kind of thing no big deal. also fine baby also fine baby yeah, it's just that I like I always add it to my wagons or at least sets of wagons because mm -hmm. then I'm at least sure that I can always move them, you know? Yep. Sort of thing. So I think that's it, right? That is it, yeah. That's it. And the gluing is pretty simple because it's just basically a box. So I'll put a marker down there. So that's one spot where you'll mark it in there. And then all the way up there. So if you grab some glue. Oh. Had it, but there it is. Okay. I'll let you do it. it so just glue from that block up to this block, and it Boom. should be a square. It and is. Everything should be inside. So I got. So a, I have a question for you now. The uh, on the because these were your original schematics for these coaches. On your original schematics, you've got a lot of really weird glue spots. Was there a reason for doing gluing like that? Uh, yeah, uh, what I sort of like to do is um, don't, or like every air that is there, I don't want to glue that. So in here, what I actually did is, for example, all the way over here in the corner, in the bottom, yep. there is no glue because there's also nothing there, like no actual block. And in here too, oh. you can glue it like a box, like what we just did. That's yep. easier. But if you want to like include other things right next to it or almost inside of it, then it's safer to only glue everything that's in it, you know, except like glue no air, basically. Yep, that makes total sense. Yep. But I must say, like, these wagons are so simple that you can just glue these as a box. But for example, if you have like an engine, what I like to do is glue like all of the uh, uh, um, like higher areas and lower areas separate. Mm -hmm. So you don't get that much air inside of your uh, gluing zone, I guess. You could call that. Yep. Makes sense. But right now these should work. So uh actually we can I can test one thing out. Just have some controls in here for one second. So Sure. Then yeah. we can see if it works. Oh. If it lets me place these. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So there, there we, we go. go. And I have an advancement. That's great. Nice. Look at that. It's almost like it's a uh, New York City metro now. Yeah, except you have no window and you cannot look where you go. Well, yeah, just F5. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Like, uh, I was all already going to say if you go really far ahead, you'll actually hit another engine. So uh, don't go too far. But... Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that's that, right? That is that. And I that. don't know uh, how you want to end the video. But... Well, I, th I think that's pretty much it. Normally what I just say is, if you know, if you like the video, like the video. If you dislike the video, dislike the video. Make sure to go over and subscribe to this fella on uh, YouTube, uh, Imagineer Dave. And, uh, you know, you'll get some really cool stuff. And, you know, only other thing I say is, okay, love you, bye! And Good evening, everybody. My name is Bubbycraft, and tonight we're building... Harold the helicopter. Let's get started. I had to build him or place the finished model a little bit farther away this time instead of the next couple tracks over. Just because of the size of the, um, I guess, wingspan, we'll call it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so what we want to do to start is you want to place down um, some rail, obviously, and then you want to put down a station. Make sure that your station. Um, is put into build mode and then once you have your station in build mode what you want to do is you want to remove the blocks underneath that area in a one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven by one two three four five an eleven by five area once you have those blocks removed in that 11 by 5 area, make sure that you you can either remove the blocks underneath the tracks if you want to, or leave them. I also removed the blocks um, and this side here, one here and one here. 
make sure that you get rid of at least two blocks in the front worth of track, but you have to get rid of one, two, three, four, five, six blocks worth of track in the back. That should give you a hole that looks like this. And what we're going to do with that hole is we're going to place down an invisible bogey right in the middle. And that's going to be our starting off point. So from there, we want to shift click a piece of the white slash local metal on top of it. And we're just going to go right into building our uh, front of front of Herald so far. Our front of Herald to begin with. Oh my goodness. Learning how to talk again, apparently. Um, I have been sick recently, so I apologize for not streaming as much and everything, but um, I hoping to get back into that soon. Um, I have been playing a lot of Monster Hunter World lately, so I kind of want to start streaming that a little bit more too. But uh, that's stuff that we'll talk about on a later, later date and time sort of thing. All right, anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put down a two by three block of um, the white slash local metal and then you're gonna go back and surround your invisible wogie with that uh, white slash local metal as well from here what we want to do is we want to go ahead and place down um, the start of our copycat bites and you might be saying you might be thinking to yourself but Bubby that doesn't make any sense that you're putting these down in the shape of stairs when you could just put down stairs well you might be right but what I want to do is have the odd looking um, odd looking rivet pattern that's made when you do the rivets inside of or the local metal inside of these copycat blocks or copycat bites rather so yeah that's what I'm doing so um, on, the, on your middle first piece here, in the middle on the top, what you're going to do is you're going to place down basically a copycat stair or uh, out of bites, and then you're just going to repeat that, but an upside down stair right there. And then we're going to do the uh, bites down the sides here, bites down the sides here, a couple bites there. And then a couple bites there and what that's going to do is it's going to give you kind of like a protruding bulbous front for Harold. And we're going to go ahead and grab a hold of the um, copycat slopes that sort of go up a little bit and what we want to do or er, go up in levels I should say and what we want to do is we want to place those down so that they line up with the copycat slabs that we are going to be placing in the back. So there we go. Now we've got the front of our herald. Then we're going to go ahead and take and run our um, white local metal back. And from where you placed your first couple, you're going to go one, two, three, four. So you're going to do a four by two. We want to go one, two, three, four. So we've got our four by two. We're going to repeat this on both sides. Perfect. The next thing that I did was I came inside, or I made a cab, if you will. So we're going to grab some copycat panels. And what we're going to do is place down one copycat panel right there, come underneath it place down another copycat panel and remove that temporary top one. We're going to place down row a 2 by 3 row of the copycat panels. The reason that we're doing that... Oh, actually, I'm sorry, it's a 1 by 3 We get rid of the back row here. The reason that we're doing that is because we're going to be placing down copycat doors. Oops. We're going to be placing down copycat doors that will inevi uh, inevitably open to the back of the helicopter and go towards the back of the helicopter. From there, we're going to come down here again and we're going to place down 
a row of two by three. Pretty sure. Let me just come in here. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I did. I left a little space back there if you wanted to put something in there, like a uh, chest or something. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and build this in, or fill that in rather. So that way we have um, our helicopter, you know, going and everything. So our next thing that we want to do is we're going to start building out the back of our helicopter. We're going to place down a row of upside down copycat stairs with a row of white slash local metal on the top. From there, we're going to run out another white slash row. Underneath that last white slash row, we're going to place down a row of copycat panels, and you're starting to see why we have this giant hole. So our copycat panels are placed down, and then we're going to place down another row of white slash local metal. From there, we're going to go into our copycat list, and we're going to grab a hold of the vertical slope, place those vertical slopes out like so, with a block, a full block in the middle, grab a hold of a copycat slab, place down two of them, and then one out on either side on the back. Make sure you fill those in with your white local metal. We're going to grab a hold of the copycat stairs once more, place down a copycat stair, fill it with the white, place down a white local metal, and place that, or place a copycat stair filled with the white on top of that. From here, we're just going to build out a simple rotor. Actually, what we want to do here is we want to just clean up our palette just a little bit. There we go. So placing down a simple rotor, we're going to do a copycat slab right there. And then go up three on that side. Go out three on that bottom one. Go down three on that guy, and then go out three on that guy. Next, we want to grab the industrial industrial iron. We want to make sure that it's the one from Design and Decor. The reason being, the one from Design and Decor has connective textures, and it actually looks really cool. Perfect. So we're going to fill in this sort of shape, like kind of a weird X right there. And then we're going to place down uh, white local metal on those outside bits. I'm going to run over here and grab the slash local metal and place this the red slash local metal on the outsides. And that is the back end of Herald, or what's known as the back rotor, done or the back uh, fin part, if you will. What we want to do now is we want to kind of uh, make this sort of a sloping shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to place down, so we're going to put the white local metal in our offhand. We want to place down a T shape of just the copycat layers, just placing down one layer. Our next row, we're going to go up by two. And then our row after that is three. Our row after that is four. And then our row after that is five. There we go. Perfect. The next thing that we want to do is take a look and realize that oh this back row does not exist we need to put down the copycat slope layer i apologize 
Again, it wouldn't be a Bubbycraft video if there wasn't a mistake or two. Okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna place down these slope layers like so, so that they line up with this block here in the back. Your middle one is gonna be white local metal. And your back two are going to be the black stained glass. And then what you're going to do from there is you're going to run a piece of black stained glass out from the back of those slope layers. And then you're going to grab the um, gray stained glass and fill in those layers there. What we also want to do is we want to place down a copycat panel right there and fill that with the gray stained glass as well. Instead of placing panels on the top for the roof, we're going to do another another bout of um, layers. And we're going to go in the front here. We're going to go one, one, one two, 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 one, one. And then inside the middle here, we're just gonna place down one full block of the white local metal. You can do what I did and use the iron wrapped local metal just to give it a sense of like, I don't know, machinery or something. You can do pretty much whatever you want there. You could even do the industrial iron again if you wanted to. It is entirely up to you. Um, you may be asking, why can't you put the um, bearings inside of there and just hide a motor inside? Well, you certainly can do that. And as a matter of fact, I did have this set up to where there were bearings hidden inside of Harold and Harold's uh, blades were spinning and everything looked absolutely amazing but then I put it out of build mode into or I'm sorry I took it out of assembled mode assembly mode and put it into build mode and the rotor stopped and you have exactly what happened with Harold here where the rotors do not move and nothing spins so I ended up replacing this piece here as well as this piece here with just the white uh, iron wrapped local metal just to have it um, be something a little bit different. Oh, that's right, I put that there. And then we did a copycat board on either side of that, I completely forgot. To hide that, um, the black, or the iron sides on the other three sides. Okay, we're gonna place down a um, a copycat board with the white again right there just to hide the back of it make it a little bit more white a little bit more flush the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place down a one two layer in the middle and then we're gonna place down a copycat layer or a bunch of copycat panels I mean we want to grab a hold of the industrial iron that has the connective textures and some red slash local metal because what we're going to be doing now is placing down one on either side of that copycat layer that you just put down with the iron filled in go out three on either side with the iron Switch your block to the red local metal, go out one on either side, I apologize. Oops. Replacing down white there, and then red to cap it off. There is enough room to do red, white, red, but I don't know, I kind of liked it as just the white than the red. I don't know, I kind of thought it looked cool. But you can extend these out by one more and do uh, red, white, red. Whatever you want to do, it's your build. 
um, it's entirely up to you. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to start making Harold look a little bit more like Harold. So we're going to clean our palette just a little bit here. We're going to grab a hold of the copycat vertical slice and a copycat slice. I went with the red concrete powder for those stripes down along the side. And I went with the red local metal with some copycat half panels for the different red intricate little details. So we've got one dot there. I apologize, not there. One dot there. And one dot there. And then we're going to place down one, two. That's going to represent his nameplate where it says Harold on him. And one, two, right there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a copycat slice on the back side or the left fully left hand side of these white bricks so that you're able to go boop 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 and what we want to do also is we want to grab a hold of the copycat shoot the copycat doors place the copycat doors on at this time okay doesn't want to let me in so here we go Place the doors so that they open like that. There is still a bug in this version that I have of Copycats Plus where the doors disappear. There may have been updates at the time of this at the time of this video's release um, that solved that problem, but as of the as of this recording time, that problem has not been solved. So we're gonna close the door and we're gonna shift right click the copycat slice with the um, Red, color, red concrete powder coloring. And we're just repeating the same design that we made um, on the other one on that side right there. Next thing that we want to do is we want to put the white in our offhand. We're just going to place down some distinguishing details just to give us a little bit more herald appearance started in the wrong spot. We want to start here and go like that so we can place one. That's going to make it look like there's a separation in the windows, which there should be. And there we go. At this point, your version of Harold can be done. This is actually a pretty decent looking helicopter. So if you wanted to just do this is your herald you're more than welcome to it's your build do what you want but what we're actually going to be continuing forward with we're going to grab a copycat panel and what we're going to do here is we're just going to run a copycat panel out from the sides like that and leave that there for just a quick second because we actually need to decorate the bottom of Harold, which is the other reason why there is this giant hole underneath Harold. So we're going to grab a copycat layer, still with the white in our offhand, and we're going to place down shift click one on either side, two, Three, two. So one, two, three, two. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give like a little bit of a curve to the bottom of your herald. So that, again, that's one, two, three, two. And that just gives a little bit of a curve. We don't add anything else to the bottom of the back aside from those panels that we already added there. we're also going to add on this block here is one of these diagonal girders 
and then on the back of that stair. One diagonal girder there. And one diagonal girder there. And if you were like me and you placed down the half panel right there because I told you to, delete it and put it, move them over. These diagonal panels should line up perfectly with the, the door slab right there. Okay, we're gonna clear out the pallet just a little bit. And our next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna re-grab the copycat bite. Placing down, and I'm sorry, black concrete as well. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to grab the white local metal that's iron wrapped, and say a copycat stair as well. We're going to place the white iron wrapped in our offhand. Place down two um, copycat bites. Replace the offhand with the black concrete and make a copycat stair with the black concrete underneath it, like so. The next thing we want to do is we want to replace the um, iron wraps in our hand and place down a, just a, any temporary block to place down an upside down. I have black iron or iron wrapped local metal um, copycat stair. And we're going to continue those stairs down to right here, just before the uh, tail starts to curve in. And I forgot, we actually need a copycat panel as well. These copycat panels are going to go right here. 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 And here. And that's what's going to connect the water wings, or whatever you want to call them, to um, your herald. So just continue along running your. running your upside down stairs and then we're gonna grab a hold of one of the dude that we're just gonna repeat our thing again what this is doing is these are these are acting like the tires that are on Harold that you see so there we go now Harold has two tires so he can land on uh, land on a tarmac like a plane or he can land in the water because they act like a flotation device repeat that process one more time on the other side. Also have a way to walk up into Harold. The next thing we want to do is we want to fill in the interior of Harold. What I did here was I placed down a copycat layer and then let's grab the train control and let's grab the seat. So I went with the copycat layer here just so it was you know something a little bit more like a step up then I place down a white local metal, put the seat on top of that. You can remove that block there and place the train control right inside. So that's going to be right on top of the invisible bogey. And then when you get inside of the, when you get inside of Harold, you'll have this view. You'll be treated to this view right here. To get out of Harold, just hop down. There you go. Easy peasy. 
that is your Herald the Helicopter. Gluing Herald is a little bit different. What you want to do is you want to start with the propellers and always make sure that there are no bits of leftover glue from something that you've previously glued. We're going to start with the propellers and just run our bit of glue down through to the other side, making sure that the propellers are separate and there's no other bits of glue surrounding. You can just run one giant block of glue, but you know, we're learning something different. here. You're gonna then right click the middle on that copycat layer and run that bead of glue down to the white iron wrap local metal. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place down a temporary block here. I apologize, and then a temporary block here. Next thing from there, well actually for break right here, I apologize. Click right click that guy, bring it over to that temporary block. Remove your temporary blocks. And the reason we did that is because we're still going to glue this so that you can add in motors and have uh, the, the blades whirl and everything if you have the build in build mode. To glue the rest of your herald together, we're going to go ahead and place a bead of glue on that piece there. Run that bead of glue all the way down to that that panel, complete that circuit with this pan connecting that panel to that panel. We're going to boop a piece of glue right there onto that and do the same thing on the other side, like so. Click and complete your circuit. Like so. For this rotor, what we're going to do is we're going to just place down a temporary block on either side, like that, and just, oop, just glue that rotor together. Remove your temporary blocks, and you're back to having your rotors completely separate from everything else. We want to grab this middle guy right here, connect it to that block right there, fill in the forgotten uh, copycat beam with the industrial iron, and your herald is completely filled in, or completely glued. Ah, nope, I apologize. There we go. Now your herald, oh, nope, 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 shh, okay, we're almost there. And now your herald is, com oh, nope, wait, nope, this guy over here, this guy, okay, and now your herald is, oh, nope, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now your herald is completely glued. And another little trick that's pretty neat is if you hold down, for me it's the left shift, for you it might be control, I don't know, but if you hold down, um, I think it's your crouch key, you'll be able to turn all the pieces that are glued blue, and you'll be able to see if anything is missing. In my case here, nothing is missing. So I am free to come over here to my station, assemble that train. You can name your train Herald if you wish. And I'm gonna come in here and test Herald. And what we're doing is we're just looking to see what pieces, if any, have been missed by the gluing. This piece here, we'll just connect to that there, and that's all of our pieces glued. So again, if you take your 
Herald out of build mode if you have the same version of copycats um, as I do. You will have to replace your doors. Again, this was just an issue at the time of recording this video. It may have been fixed by the time you watch this. But there we go. We now have Harold. And what I want to do is I want to just show a little something cool here. Utilizing the phantom rails. Oh, I've already replaced those doors. Harold. Utilizing phantom rails. You can do a little something cool. Like so. You can go inside your herald. And you can just apparently forget to click the train can train train. Hello? There we go. We must have been on a, on, a, on a little bit of a hill here. Yeah, we were. You can put your Herald on some phantom rails and bring Herald into the sky. And eventually I will have a phantom rail track all throughout the island. And not pro probably not all throughout the island, just in some spots. And, it, and eventually extend Harold's track and make it so that Harold can move around on the island and stuff like that. Um, because I think it would be really cool to put a conductor in Harold and have Harold fly around. I mean, this looks really good in my opinion. I think that this helicopter came out fantastic. And uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. So I'm just going to come down here, we'll leave Harold up in the sky for a second. I wanted to show you real quick before we go, um, just another thing real quick, real here, real quick here. If this is in build mode, if you replace this block here with a bearing, a mechanical bearing, not the windmill bearing, the mechanical bearing. Replace this block here with an upside down mechanical bearing so that you have the ability to put a, I'm sorry, a right side up mechanical bearing so that you have the ability to put a motor underneath it, the creative motor. Then when he's in build mode, the rotors will spin. And then what you can do here is you can replace, take out this block here, replace the uh, iron wrapped local metal um, with another mechanical bearing and then just use copycat boards and surround your motor that you put down with copycat boards so that it has a little Harold has a little bit of a jut out on either side and then this bearing will, or this rotor will spin as well this will only work as far as I know there may be a mod and if there is a mod let me know in the comments below um, as far as I know this will only work while the contraption is in build mode Again, if you know of a way to make this work um, without the contraption or with the contraption being in assembled mode, let me know. I will not be adding um, Valkyrian Skies or um, anything similar to that mod to this mod pack, nor will I be adding anything just to you know, temporarily make Herald work. If it's something that fits with the mod pack and it's something that actually um, I don't know, co cohesively fits and works and all the other stuff and things together, then I might consider it. Um, but for now, I'm not adding anything like Valkyrie and Skies or anything like that to the pack. Um, but this has been a tutorial for Harold. I really hope you liked it. If you liked the video, please like the video. If you dislike the video, dislike the video. All the stuff and things. And I really hope that uh, you enjoyed 
building Harold with me today, and I will see you on the next live stream and or next video. Have a great day. Bye bye, guys. Good evening, everybody. My name is Bubbycraft, and tonight we're doing something I never thought we'd do. Emily! Let's get started. So first things first, I want to just point out that Emily is supposed to be a little bit bigger than Thomas, but also a little bit shorter. And the tender is supposed to be a little bit bigger than Edward's, and also a little bit shorter. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start out you know, just like we always do, start from the bottom, work our way up. We want to do a standard size bogey here for the beginning. And then we're going to switch into a is it long 020 driver. Set that guy right there with an empty hand, make it bigger and then click once, twice, three times, and then it will never move again once you put it into build mode and out of build mode. Your final axle is going to be the medium single wheel. Right there. Alright, and then from here what we want to do is we want to place down the front of Emily real quick. So we can get that start getting that shape worked in there we want to place a piece of brown slashed local metal on either side of the top of that first bogey and that's going to give the effect of like you see on emily where she's got the, the little brown piece kind of hanging underneath her piston covers we're going to place one piston um, or one copycat step on the bot or on that side there and then one right on top of it. We're gonna repeat that on the other side. Oops. Like so. Perfect. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to run a slab out twice. Like so. And place a copycat step on top of it like that. Then we want to go ahead and place down a temporary block here and here. Again, we're going to just place a temporary block on either side like that. We're going to grab a copycat half panel and then on top of our middle temporary block we're going to grab a green local metal that has the brass wrap brass wrapping on top of it and that's where that's going to live permanently we're going to grab the copycat slope layer and click five times so one two three four five oh six times click six times on that front side, seven on the back, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, on the back, perfect. You can fill those in as you go with the brass wrap local metal. We're gonna use a copycat half, what is that called, a copycat half layer, and we're gonna go ahead and, oh, we actually want to do that six as well. There we go. So we can place down these half layers so that they come up and match. And then we're going to place a step on either side there like that. Five, six. And then just fill those in with the brass wrapped green local metal. The other local metal is going to be, or the other pieces of local metal that we'll be using is, that very minimally using rather, is the um, green slash local metal. We'll use it just there on the front and then a couple pieces on the tender. All right, 
next thing that we want to do is we want to come over here and kind of just copy this guy and copy this guy. From the frame blocks mod, we're going to use the uh, framed elevated slope edge on either side there. And on top of that, we're going to use the framed slope panel like that. We're going to grab a black local metal smoke box. Just place one temporarily there, temporarily behind that. Break your first one and then place down a permanent one like so. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a, oh, that was slashed. We want the black slashed local metal and we're going to just fill in those front parts there of Emily, like that. And then we're gonna grab the riveted local metal and fill in those piston covers, like that. Perfect. While you're doing this, uh, I'm sorry, not while you're doing this, but our next step rather is going to be place down the decorations now. Place one there, one there, and one there. And then we can remove our temporary blocks. Perfect. Coming back over on this side, we're gonna go like this. One there, one there, and one there. And then remove our temporary blocks. We're gonna place down a copycat step. Right, copycat step on the back there. Fill in the copycat step with black local metal. Just gonna give it a little bit of a darker shading in there. Yeah, it kinda looks a little neat. Perfect. Next thing that we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and grab a hold of a copycat slab place down that copycat slab right there off of the back of our design that we've been working on here and we're just gonna temporarily run across there and delete the one in the middle and perfect we're gonna place down in between our bogies some black local metal whoops that and then we're just gonna fill in those copycats with black local metal as well perfect now you can continue along with your half panels and the brown local metal excellent next thing we want to do is we want to place up a copycat half layer, bring it up to the level of this slope layer, and we want to grab the green slashed, fill that green, fill that in with the green slashed, and then we're gonna grab a hold of the copycat panel. Place that guy down like so. So that it's on the outside. Get rid of those temporaries. Make yourself an L and a backwards L. Place down two temporary blocks of your choice. Does not matter what they are. And we want a half panel inside. Like that. Our next step is going to be, you can run whatever blocks you want in the middle there. I'm just choosing to do the brown slashed local metal so it kind of continues along the, um, the brown 
kind of giving Emily a full brown undercarriage, that sort of thing. We're going to fill in these pieces with the green copper wrapped local metal. And then we're going to just go ahead and add in our seat and train controls. Place a temporary block, and there we go, train controls. Now let's grab a fluid tank and a whistle. Place that fluid tank on top of your controls and run the whistle out and then click it again so that you've got um, a little bit taller of a whistle. Excellent. The next thing we wanna do is inside here, we wanna run some um, copycat panels, just like that. So that way we've got um, a wall on the inside here. We're gonna grab the green riveted local metal and the bamboo window to trap door. Local metal goes there, trap doors go there. I'm going to grab a hold of the copycat layers. And we're just going to do our standard Sodor roof. One on either side, two in the middle. Perfect. Fill in that roof with that green copper wrapped local metal or brass wrapped local metal again. We're going to grab a hold of a coal, um, brass wrapped coal burner smokestack. And then we're going to just clear out the pallet a little bit here. Grab ourselves a copycat slice. We're going to run this copycat slice down along the side here and then make it one more bigger or bigger by one more, whatever you want to call it. So let me just show you this one more time. Click in this bottom corner. Perfect. Fill those in with the black color of your choice. And that's going to represent our handrails. Grab yourself a brass wrapped boiler. Fill that in. And Bob's your uncle. Oh, you know what? I never actually made this bigger. Or maybe I did and it just made it just got smaller somehow. I don't know. But there we go. That is the locomotive portion of Emily completed now. We're gonna grab a deep slate tile, deep slate stair, copycat board, and a copycat half panel. as well as those two colors there, and that guy there. We're gonna run a line of deep slate tile slabs. Back six, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, oh, five, six. place down a set of upside down stairs, upside down deep slate tile stairs running along the sides, like that. We're going to grab a train casing. Our first casing that we want is the medium trailing, and 
we want that guy to go right here. So we're gonna click that and it's gonna delete that slab for us. The next one we want is a double medium trailing again. Perfect. Those are out of the extended bogeys mod. As is this extra large bogey here. This is out of the extended bogeys mod. The other two are just standard from normal steam and rails. Again, this is extended bogeys, extended bogeys, steam and rails, extended bogeys, steam and rails. Okay. Next thing that we want to do is we want to place down our brown. Um, I don't know. Pick your trim, skirt, lining, whatever you want to call it. Like so. And then we're going to run a temporary. Let's get that out of there. A line of temporary blocks all through here. Like so. Copycat boards running along there. And then half panels running along there. That's going to give it kind of a little bit of a curve out look for Emily. Fill those in. And then you want to, every other block, you want to place a um, slashed green local metal. And then every other block, you want to place a brass wrapped. On the back, you can do whatever you want. But by giving that design there, it gives Emily that standard three gold block design that she's got in the show. Just remove our temporary blocks. You can fill in the tender with whatever you want, um, but you know, just for purposes of today, we're just going to move right into gluing Emily. So as always, make sure that you don't have any extra glue laying around. Oh wait, wait, hold on. We didn't finish the front. I'm sorry. Jump the gun a little bit here. Placing down our two decorations, like so. We're gonna grab a copycat coupler and buffer. Grab the red local metal filler. Placing down our buffers and our couplers. There we go. Now to the back side. And that completes your Emily. One thing that you can do is you can add the half panel filled with the uh, white like a local metal smoke box to give her a little bit of a face. You can do that if you want. You also, it is also very appropriate to leave it just like that as well to look like more like the real locomotive. None of the other um, TVS style builds for me have this. Originally, I decided to just leave it exactly like that, but looking at the picture and everything, um, looking at a picture and everything for Emily, that just looked closer to me, so I'm choosing to leave it. Now to move on to gluing. This is going to be similar to what we did for Gordon, for gluing Gordon. It's going to be a little bit tricky. So we're going to start at this middle buffer. We're going to come all the way back to this block here. It's important that you do it to this block here and not this block because this block will connect to this part of the bogey and these three blocks need to be completely free of glue for the time being. Now what we want to do is we want to glue from, so again we glued from this center, center coupler back to here, glue from this, um, that buffer back to that guy right there. Next thing that you want to do is you want to come over here to this buffer. 
again, stopping at the block right before the block that connects to the bogey. We're gonna grab from this buffer here, come all the way back to that half panel there. Repeat on the other side. Make sure that we get those panels and everything like that connected. We want to grab a temporary block, run that temporary block up once or twice. We want to connect another temporary block to that piece there. Blue from that block to right here. And then glue from this block. Wait, hold on. I actually don't need that. We want to grab from this guy and glue to that framed elevated slope edge. And your glue is going to start to look like this. Glue this piece to that back um, piece of local metal. And we're just going to take a test. Perfect. Oh my goodness. That scared the bejesus out of me. Alright. So if, as you can see, if we take this out of build mode, we now have those right there. I had to uh, get rid of the wandering trader. It was starting to annoy me. All right, the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that where did all the glue go? Okay, I don't know what the heck that was that just happened, but apparently Doing those commands got rid of some of the glue. So anyway, moving right along. The next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you glue uh, from this uh, this block here, glue to this block there. Like that to make that box there. Same thing on this side. Glue from this block here to you can glue to that block there, that's totally fine. And that's going to be completely gluing your um, locomotive, your Emily together. Surprisingly, you can leave this unglued, and as well as or the rest of it will get picked up by the, the seat. Just run a bead of glue from here to a temporary block that you place down here. Um, actually, no. So glue from this panel to this panel, and then just glue your couplers and connect them to that. And after following those glue steps, you should be able to, boop, there's your Emily. And you don't have anything left behind. She has a pretty regal sounding whistle. And there we go. If you like this video, please like it. Um, leave a comment, subscribe. If you dislike it, dislike it. All the stuff and things. Um, I really appreciate it. And this has been Emily's tutorial. And I appreciate each and every single one of you. And okay, love you, bye. Good evening, everybody. My name is Bubby Craft, and tonight we're building something pretty cool. I'm actually kind of excited about this. We're building Birdie the Bus. <laughs> I think that this guy looks pretty freaking cool. If you can't tell, I'm a little bit excited with how cool this guy looks. Like, I thought this came out really, really neat. And uh, yeah, I really want to show you how I came up with this guy. Um, so we're going to start with, I'm going to introduce you to a different type of building um, that I kind of, I guess, 
pioneered or whatever you want to call it. I have no idea. It's probably somebody's probably done this before, but you know, hey, I think it's pretty cool. I've never heard of it before. So this is what we're going to do. Um, so we're going to start with an invisible bogey. This is just a standard steam and rails bogey. So we're going to place down one invisible bogey. From there, what we're going to do is we are just going to fill the area with lots and lots and lots of stuff. Loads, just load this up. I thought this was just the coolest thing. I thought of this randomly and how to build this and I was just like, oh my god, that is amazing. All right, so as you can see, what I've done is I've placed down a three, three wide by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven long brick or concrete, just a bunch of concrete. What we're gonna do from here is we're gonna grab some copycat layers and some copycat steps, and we're gonna kinda go to town. And I've got phantom rails underneath that birdie there, just to kinda show what we've got going on here. We will need to remove the rail in the front and the rail in the back. The rail in the back, because we're gonna be placing down these guys like that. Just some blank copycat steps for right now. Actually, we can probably fill those in. And then a copycat layer. Oh, that's right. That's not going to go there. So on the back side here, I'm going to place down another, uh, just a separate layer of... Let me get rid of that real quick. Just a separate layer of the red concrete. And then on the top of that layer, I'm going to place down the uh, copycat steps. Let's just place this guy back there. Perfect. Okay, and then our copycat layers, we're gonna place down, uh, I believe it's two. No, it's three. It's three, because you want just a slight lip. Two, three. One, two, three. And then we wanna go ahead and place down one, two, one, two, one, two. Excellent. And then let's grab a, the mangrove glass and just place those, fill those three with mangrove glass. Basically what we're doing here is we've, ba we've made a giant block and we're gonna kind of carve our way through this giant block, adding details and stuff as we go. And what we wanna do next is we're gonna grab some copycat um, panels is what they're called. And we're just going to kind of pepper this thing with panels. Literally just go nuts. Put panels all over this thing. Just like that. We'll even put some panels on the front because that's just the way it's going to be for right now. On the top, we're just going to place down a super easy roof because we've got this giant mess of blocks underneath it. And we're going to place down a bunch of layers so that way we can easily go back in and add and add to the layers and build them up and that sort of thing. The next thing we want to do is we want to find our door. Our door exists somewhere in here. So let's find it. We found our door. There we go. Perfect. Once we have our door, what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to go ahead and just get rid of as much of this red stuff, red, um, as much of these red blocks as we absolutely can. But you know what? We're actually going to save this bottom layer just for right now. We'll get rid of that guy, but we're going to save this bottom layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to come through here Get rid of all these rails really quickly. And we're gonna place down a copycat panel. And just fill the bottom with copycat panels as well. So that way we can come in here and get rid of 
all of this stuff. Perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna place this back down. I'm gonna, while I was building this birdie, I had to get rid of the rails and the underneath a couple times. I don't think I'll have to again, but um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. All right, let's build our interior before we build anything else. I'm gonna grab a gray, light gray seat, as well as a gray, uh, me gray metal sheet, almost said metal, gray metal. And we want a copycat board, because we want something super thin. We're gonna place down uh, a layer of gray metal sheet like that to give us a floor. Boop. This is where our seats are going to go. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of those guys. And we're going to place a seat where they would have been. Like so. Place down some temporary blocks. Get rid of those and then place down our seats the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place down some copycat boards just like so and the objective here is to try and get rid of um, these Copycat panels. Oops. Crud. Alright. Copycat panel. Boom. Okay. Place the boards on top. Get rid of the panels underneath. Like so. And there we go. We're slowly building ourselves a, a floor to our bus, and that floor will be able to have rails underneath it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to just repeat that same step again. Get rid of the panels underneath by placing boards on top of those panels. Okay, our next step is we're going to come in here and just copy up the black seat as well as the train controls and we want to get rid of that space there and place down a black seat and then we can get rid of this guy and we can get rid of this guy and we can get rid of this guy I believe what we want to do is we want to place that back though real quick so that I can do this and just place a board underneath it like that so that way we have a board underneath our train controls which I believe go right there oh I've got this a little backwards just a little backwards okay so we want that guy to go there that guy to go there this board of course it's not gonna work of course it's not gonna work so we're gonna place that board like so get rid of that back in here clear the pallet just a little bit so we can get this off our offhand and we want to place that train controls like right our train control right there and then we're gonna place down a red concrete block right there now to shape the front of our bus actually we do want to keep that layer there for right now and we want to get rid of that right there so we're going to shape the front of our bus now. 
And this is where it's going to be actually kind of cool. Because you get to, you're going to learn a pretty neat technique that's going to require you to build birdie and creative. He really can't be built in survival because unfortunately there is a barrier block that is utilized here. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, but what we want to do is we're going to start with replacing our front of the bus here with some boards. So we want to place those boards on the inside. Oh, actually not on that guy right there. My apologies. So we want to do a board there. And we can get rid of those like that. We can actually get rid of this and we can get rid of that. So see your birdie model is already starting to look like birdie. We're going to place a piece of white sheet metal or white metal sheet inside of the front here to act as the grill, but also act as the face for your bus. And it just so happens to work out that, you know, the, the face, the quote unquote face just looks like a grill for the bus. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a brass lamp and place that brass lamp on this side. And we're going to break this block, this, this, and this. We're going to come into our creative menu and we're going to grab a hold of a copycat bite. I'm going to place the red concrete in my offhand. And I want that built out to be just red concrete. And then I want black. Where is it? I want this color. So it's a black metal sheet. And I want the black metal sheet to come out so that way we're creating a stair like so perfect and then once we have our stair in place what we're gonna do is we are going to place down um, we're gonna clear our palette just a little bit here place down one of these and then one of these 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 and what this block is is the grill black concrete is what that's called that's going to shape our tire and i want to do this one more time to show you what i did i found the block that's right here underneath this last um copycat bite that you just placed down and we're going to place a copycat bite here here and then a bite on either side of it like that. And you're gonna fill those in with the uh, grill black concrete because that looks like a tire. And then you're gonna take a copycat bite and place it there, 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 and there. Grab your black metal sheet and fill those in. And now you have Birdie's black hubcap. We're gonna grab a hold of a copycat half panel and I'm going to place down a half panel here, here, and here. Take the gray metal sheet and put that underneath Birdie's face and black metal sheet on either side. And then you have a pretty neat little bumper. Nice little shading effect to it. You're going to take two blank copycat bites and set them like that. And you're going to go into your creative menu and grab the uh, barrier blocks. And we're going to go ahead and ditch the red concrete for right now because we can get that back easily. Right click the copycat bites with those barrier blocks and then they disappear. And it just looks like the front of Birdie in my opinion. So that's pretty cool. We're going to get rid of that barrier block because we actually don't need it anymore. And we're going to place down a few more red concrete copycat bites because we want to make sure that we have a row of copycat bites all the way back here to be able to help hide that uh, bogey that's sitting right there. Perfect. The next thing that we want to do is we want to come back in here to our menu and we want to grab a copycat uh, board and we're going to place a copycat board right here. So that way we have the uh, the illusion of this being like a closed, 
I don't know, closed off side, whatever you want to call it. Place a temporary block. And then we're going to place down... Um, let's see, we can get rid of this, and we can get rid of this. Put our red concrete there, and we're going to place down one more copycat board, like so. We're going to come into our menu, and we're going to grab the copycat half layer. We're going to do something pretty cool with this copycat half layer. We're going to place down a complete row, or a complete half block, if you will. Um or whatever this is called, a slab, whatever you want to call it, um, of the copycat uh, half layers. Place down one regular half layer. Shift click another full slab. Like this. And placing down another copycat layer, fill those in with red, and this is where you should be with your birdie so far. Alright, next thing that we want to do is we want to start adding in some color and some windows. So we're going to grab a hold of this railed red concrete to give that black stripe along the side of birdie. Fill those in like that. And we're going to grab the mangrove glass as well as some regular glass. We're going to place our regular glass in the front and on our two half panels, our half, um, half blocks, whatever you want to call these now that we've created with the half layers. And then we're going to place down through, for the rest of these windows, the mangrove glass. That's going to give us our six, six distinct windows, well, seven in this case, because it's, you know, my model and that's what I'm building. Um, so four on this side and seven on the other. Birdie's going to be a little bit longer than normal, but it's fine. It works. It fits. It makes him look to scale with all the other locomotives and all that sort of thing. So that's what we're doing. Oh, yes. And that's right. So the reason we put down these barrier blocks here is without those barrier blocks, let me just show you. If we take, if we just put back in these guys like so, and we go boop boop, and then we go like this, and we go like that, if we just have a stair, we can't place that brass lamp. For whatever reason, it only lets you place these lamps or any lamp or any headlight or anything that I've been able to find on a whole block. So the second I did this, for example, I was able to uh, place down the full or the, the lamp. And then I thought to myself, well, what if barrier goes in there and what's that look like? And sure enough, it just hides those blocks. You might think, what if you put those barriers there? Well, if you do that, then it does this weird thing, and I didn't like how that looks, so that's what we're doing. We're gonna not do that, and completely forget that that's just gonna destroy everything. Oh my goodness, okay. Like that, and then like that. Perfect. Now to finish up we're gonna place down that window right there like so. And then we're gonna actually place that guy. And I believe I did glass there. Let me just double check. I did, I did. Perfect. So now you've got your closed in cab, if you will, of the, of the bus, as well as the um, sort of ability to make it look like your driver's sitting in there. Again, I can't put um, okay, here's what you might be thinking. What if you replace this block with a board? I tried that. Then I can't move the train controls forward. And then the, uh, the light, so the light would be on a board, sure. But at the same time, I can't put the train controls right behind it because that board still takes up a full block. So that's why the driver's seat is a little bit farther back, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. It really, really is not. Alright, the next thing that we're going to do 
is we're going to create this cool illusion of a step that we've got here. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to place down... Hold on, let me think how I did this. I think I went like this, and then I went up like this, and then... Yes, that's exactly what I did. Okay, so like this, like that. Those are all barrier blocks. And then you place those like that. And the steps are a different color because they're a little bit worn. People tread on them all day. They're a different color. So now you've got the cool effect of being able to walk inside of Birdie. And yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make the getting up into Birdie look a little bit more realistic. So we're going to add a handbar. And I just filled that handbar slot with a copycat vertical slice and put some white local metal in there. And that's what we did. Excellent. Our final step uh, in order to finish up our bus build is we are going to go ahead and just fill the roof in with some red concrete. Like so. Grab the copycat layers as well as the copycat slice. And we wanna bring we wanna bring up the layers, uh, the layer of the roof. We wanna go everything or the front we wanna go up to, and then the next row, three, the next row, three, 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 two, and then we place down a copycat slice. So it gives Birdie kind of like a slope of sorts, but it's Minecraft. You can't really make a slope too much, so that's what it's going to look like. Run a, oops, run a row of copycat slices filled with red concrete all the way along like that. Your final step, you can place down a couple of these blocks to represent the back tires. And then we want to build our... Um, other tire here for the front, like so. Whoops. These actually need to go back here. Why can't I do that? Oh, that's right. Tartar sauce. What did I do for the inside of here? Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and just boop down a layer like that. What was the color that I used? Look better I better just grab it. Yeah, I did the, the gray metal sheet. Okay. Like that. And we're just gonna drop down, place those gray metal sheets in. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let's do gray metal sheet. Do the tire. So that way we've got our tire. And then we want the... Oh, I didn't actually do anything special here because I went like this and I took and I put a row of copycat panels down to be able to place or give it the effect that Birdie's tires are kind of sort of half hidden. And then I did the same exact thing on this side. Place that like that. And then there we go. I'm pretty sure that's everything. Yeah. 
Awesome, that's everything. To glue your birdie, it's just gluing in one simple motion. You're gonna place down a temporary block there. A temporary block there. Make sure you have no other pieces of glue from any past projects. Like so. Right click one temporary block, right click the other, and then your birdie is built. What you may come across is you won't be able to put him back into build mode just quite yet because you need to actually run some track all the way through so that it fills in and it allows for the uh, rail to actually have or the wheel to actually have space on the rail behind it. I don't know why it requires that, but it does. And there you go. Let's just put this back in because there is one other detail piece that I completely forgot. When you place Birdie in and out of build mode, those brass lamps tend to just disappear. It's whatever. It's gonna happen. It's Minecraft. There are limitations. It's not a big deal. We're gonna place a copycat board here and then a gray metal sheet. You can actually just do the light gray metal if you wanted to. It's up to you. It's your bus. It's your build. Um, but there you go. That will help hide, hide the back of that bogey a little bit more. You will not be able to hide this and you won't be able to hide that. So it is what it is. Um, but yeah, that is how you build Birdie and make him work and do all the amazing stuff and things that a bus would do. Boop. Boop. Cool. So if you like the video, please like the video and leave a comment, subscribe, all the stuff and things. It would be absolutely amazing of you. You guys are fantastic. I really appreciate you. The world is really shaping itself quite nicely. I've kind of grown really fond of the RWS characters, as you can see. And I haven't deleted Emily. There she is right there. Corner of my head. Uh, top left corner of my head, right next to Gordon. So, yeah. Um, we'll be doing some more live streams and some stuff soon. Um, you know, I've just been super busy and everything but appreciate you guys still being here and commenting and saying some really nice things you guys are all amazing and until next time thanks very much and okay love you bye good evening everybody my name is Bubby Craft, and tonight we're going a little bit out of number order and we're building arthur this one is a little bit complicated and i want to go ahead and just explain something as well so arthur was not in the railway series books to the best of my knowledge um but so what i did when i designed this arthur was i designed him so that he was able to be somewhat scaled to the rws characters that i have um and i went ahead and made him just a little bit bigger than thomas just like he is in the show and i scaled him like this on purpose because i'm gonna have him in a upcoming video that I'm going to make um, called The Spotless Record. I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with that episode. It's out of season seven of Thomas and Friends, but I'm gonna try, try my best, now that I have uh, Arthur and we have Duck over here, RWS Duck, and I'm not sure if you saw this, but uh, we have a little secret character that I've been working on. Uh, yeah, and uh, there's a little secret guy too, but uh, yeah, we're, we're getting sidetracked. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and build us an Arthur. We're going to start off with a single axle, and we're going to go with out of the extended bogies mod, the small 020 standard, and we're going to place that down. So when we're going to get this to turn around, so we're going to click it once, twice, three, Four. So essentially what you're doing, let me just do that one more time. The first time you click it with an empty hand, you don't see the white words. The second time, 
You don't see the white words for some reason either. Third time rotated bogey, fourth time rotated bogey. So basically what you want is you want to be able to see the words rotated bogey. And then that's how you know that the bogey is going to stay like that. And when you put your Arthur in and out of build mode, like I'm about to do, you'll notice that the wheels don't move. They don't spin like that bug that you might be experiencing. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to go to our triple axle and we want the, where is it? Short 060 driver. Wait, no, I'm sorry, we want the long one. Long 060 driver, perfect. Place that down right there. So that make sure that your piston is covering up the side of that wheel. Perfect. And then we're going to reach into our bag of tricks and we're going to grab another small 020 and place that right there. And well, actually, I take that back. Is that right there? Yeah, that's right there. Perfect. And then what you're going to do is you're going to shift right click that bogey and it's going to unlink it. Now, this, as this is in this extended bogeys mod, you'll be able to shift right click it and unlink it so that way it's easier to glue. Otherwise, the way that this wheel arrangement is, you won't be able to glue because these two bogeys are touching each other. And for some reason, they act as um, one entity when they're, or, I'm sorry, they still act like separate entities, but they act like they're entities inside each other or something I, I don't understand how it all works but it won't allow you to glue trust me I tried a million different things with that Arthur over there it just won't let you glue him so yeah that's what we're doing all right next thing that we want to do is we want to grab a couple of things off of this guy We want to come over here and we want to shift right click in a pair of deep slate stairs. And then we want to shift right click in a fluid tank. And we want to grab a deep slate, I'm sorry, deep slate tile stairs, then a fluid tank. And then we want a deep slate tile there as well. Perfect. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're running it looks like a couple back here i apologize this guy is so complicated i just don't want to make any mistakes i didn't really practice this one beforehand so i'm building him with you at the same time essentially even though i literally just built him next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start making this design right here we're going to put in our offhand the red brass wrap logo metal take a copycat bite and we're just going to start running our copycat bites along in in the shape of three slabs so we want three slabs on the top of these we're going to turn them into full blocks now the reason that we are doing bites is so that the texture connects all the way across on the top of our third bite, uh, sorry, on the top of our starting on our second bite, we're gonna put down another slab's worth of copycat bites. And then we're just gonna fill in off of that slab, or off of that, uh, yeah, just, just do what I'm doing. I don't know how to explain this, and I'm getting tongue-tied. So there we go. This part of the build is going to go over top of the middle wheel. And we're going to go ahead and just complete that on the other side. Like so. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Now, the reason I'm doing Arthur out of order is because I figured, why not? He's He was last on the list, and I kind of 
like Arthur now that I've watched a little bit about him and I know what's going on with him and everything and you know I kind of just wanted to make Arthur that and there were a lot of requests for Arthur as well a lot of requests okay so as you can see I'm now putting in a slab worth of red local metal um, bites there to go on top here and then I am going to place down a set of three of those full blocks we're gonna go ahead and grab a copycat slope layer oh actually we can keep the red riveted on our offhand we want that to go like that. I think that was seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, we know it was six. So click that down six times. Placing the brass wrapped one in the middle. Then we're gonna grab a hold of a copycat slice. Place that copycat slice on the outside. Oops. On top there, no. On, oh my goodness. On top there. And then we want on top the no. hole. Oh my goodness. Alright. Here. It's gonna be difficult. It's just gonna be difficult. So we're gonna place down that two copycat half layers on either side of those half layers you're going to place down a couple of slices and then you're going to grab your coal and fill in his coal box coal slants downwards so i made the second one or the back one a little bit taller so there we go next thing that we want to do is we're going to clear out our palette just a little bit here and we want to grab a copycat vertical slice and a copycat board. I believe that's a board. It is a board. Okay. We're going to place down a couple of temporary blocks. Board on the outside. Remove your temporary blocks. Board on the inside remove your outer boards you're gonna grab the slim mangrove window fill in your windows like so temporary block on the outside copycat board on the inside remove your temps mangrove windows on the inside excellent take your copycat half layers and we're going to place them right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that it just goes to the top and covers up that window. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. We're going to grab a whistle. Place that whistle down on top of our fluid tank. Bring it up three times. Right click it so that it's the most small one. And fill in those blocks like so. Grab your half layers and you're gonna place down the same number of half layers right there by clicking on the whistle so that you've got this shape right here. The next thing that we wanna do is we're gonna go into our little bag of tricks and we're going to grab a copycat slope layer again. And we're just going to put the roof on. One, two. One, two. Two. One, two. Take a copycat slice. Run that on the back there to connect up to the bottom of that roof. Again, run that there. And so it connects it to the bottom of your roof. Fill that in with the red local metal. There we go. 
We want the deep slate tiles. There's Bean. He says hi, everybody. A good comment to leave would be hi, Bean. So it's a little bit different of a roof than we normally do, which is fine. We want to be different. Sometimes if we get stuck in a rut doing the same thing all the time, things can get boring and repetitive, and we don't want boring and repetitive. We want new and exciting and fun. Okay, perfect. We might as well just finish up. Wait, what was that? Oh, turtle egg. <laughs> Um, we want a train. No, train. 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 I can spell. Train controls right there. And then behind that, we want to go ahead. Oh my goodness. We're going to put down a board. Fill that in with the red local metal. And there we go. That is our cab. We're gonna grab a seat. If I can, you know, just spell correctly for like the next 25 minutes, that'd be great. Perfect, that's your cab. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna just, we might as well just finish things off here. We're gonna grab a hold of a copycat half panel. We're gonna grab our buffer and our coupler. Place down our buffers, our coupler. Fill those in with the red local metal. Placing down the half panels on the back side here. Filling those in with the local metal as well. We actually still needed the slices. We're gonna place one, two. One, two. Come over here to the other side. One, two, one, two. Grab the gray cow catcher out of the Dave's Building Extended mod. Those are gonna be your hand railings to get up into Arthur. Ooh. Perfect. We're gonna grab a hold of a copycat ladder, placing down that ladder there. Filling it in with the red. Is it supposed to be black? I think it's supposed to be black. My bad. Copycat ladder. Black local metal plates. Black local metal plates. That right there completes the back half of your Arthur. So your Arthur should look like this up to this point. Next thing that we're going to do is we are going to grab a uh, iron wrapped local metal boiler red and a red local metal boiler we're going to come in here and we're going to place down boiler by clicking on that steam whistle so we want the iron wrapped one first and then we want two red ones following it what you're going to do next is you're going to take a copycat half layer. Clicking on this half layer right here, clicking on the front of it. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to grab a copycat layer. Same thing. Click on the front of it. One, two, three, four, five six seven that one is going to match up with this layer right here one oh what no one two three four five so this one is going to match up with that layer right there take your half layer again one my goodness one no, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. All right, next thing we wanna do is we're gonna place down yet another half layer. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think that's going to be the height of a copycat headstock. Our next thing that we want to do is we want to place down a black local metal. Grab that. We want to place that. Not right there. So we're going to do a little bit of trick. We're going to do a little trick. See how that turns black like that? We're going to place down a layer, a layer, remove that middle, black local metal, and what did I do in the middle here? I think that, that was what I did, was I just left it like that, I think, and I just put, we'll just put one there like that. I'm down here underneath this guy. What we want to do is you're going to temporarily remove this piece of rail and then remove this piece of gravel or remove the piece underneath it rather and you're just going to place a copycat slab right there off of that bogey. And then let's just go ahead and fill that back in. place that rail back on there. Fill all of this in with, well, not that one. Fill those in with the black local metal. Fill that in with the black local metal. This guy is going to be the smoke box facing away from you. We're gonna grab a oil burner smokestack and a coal burner smokestack. Oil burner on top, right click it to turn off the smoke. Shift click the coal burner on top of that. And then we wanna grab a copycat headstock. We're gonna place copycat headstocks all around our oil burner smokestack, fill these in like so, oh, I made this guy one too tall, there we go, take your copycat layers, bring those layers out six so we've got one layer on, we want two, three, four, five, six, like that. And then you're gonna grab another copycat layer. One, two, three, four, I believe. No, it's a three. One, two, three. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Place one layer on the outside and click it out once. So you've got that. Place down the smoke box pieces like so. Grab yourself a copycat half layer. Click onto want it right there because that's not going to make any sense for what we're trying to do here. So how can we do this? What's the best way? We want to continue forward with what we were doing. So we're going to place down a panel here, oh, panel here, here, here. And oh, that's actually not going to be a panel. We want a copycat board. This one is a copycat board. Boom. So place down two copycat panels underneath here. Let's illustrate better over here. Two copycat panels. And then, oh, that's a copycat panel as well. Oh, and then a copycat board up in the front. Oh, okay. See, I'm, I'm relearning how to do this even though I just did it. 
Normally I practice building these guys a couple of times, but I'm recording this right after I built it. I'm gonna grab a copycat board, shift click that copycat board there, and there. Repeat our panels on east, uh, this other side here. Like a so. We're gonna place down a temporary block. Where did that just get placed? Oh, right there. Okay, these are supposed to be red. So we're just gonna fill these in because it's causing confusion with the placement of other blocks here. So we're gonna place a temporary block here here and here come inside of this we're going to place down a board on the back of that a board on the back of that <clears throat> and then down here on the bottom we're going to place another temporary block grab yourself a copycat panel a copycat slab rather and on the top of this slab, or the top of that um, block, temporary block, place a blank slab. And then we can remove this temporary block. Did I fill in the back? I did not. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. We can also remove that guy as well. Alright, same thing. Enter in from over here. Place a board. Board block nope. there we go that slab's gonna be a little bit of a turd but in the end you will get it perfect now what you want to do is You'll see how we have another copycat board on the outside here. We're just going to fill that in with red so that it's red, red, board on the outside, board on the outside. And then we're going to take a copycat half panel. Place that half panel right there. Let's grab the brass wrapping and fill that in like so. Perfect. Now for our front, we're going to grab some white steel. Fill that in with the white steel. Again, grab the white steel. Do the steel slab this time. We're going to place a steel slab there and a steel slab there. We want to grab the copycat half layer. And now we should be able to off of the slab. Click once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven. Just so you can see just a spot of color right there. And that's just gonna, you know, just a little bit of, a little bit of something different. It's supposed to be white there, but that's literally the closest to white that I could get. I can't find any other way to put a bogey, make the bogey white back there, or any sort of white. So if we do one more, then it covers it up. And this piece doesn't go up that high on Arthur in the pictures. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna grab the white steel again and we're gonna place that on this front one here and then this black one is going to be the black riveted local metal place your buffers and your couplers and then we want to just do those in with the um, red local metal grab hold of the copycat half panel place down that half panel like that 
then we're almost done. We're just gonna do a little bit of decoration now. So we're gonna place, clicking right here in the bottom part, is gonna place that slice there. If you try to place it there, it's not gonna work. So again, click in that, um, click where those two blocks combine, and it's gonna place that slice for you. The next thing that we wanna do is we're gonna place down one, two, three. I believe it's three. Fill that guy in there. One, two, three. Fill that guy in there. Fill all of those in with just the red local metal. We're gonna grab a copycat layer. Place down a copycat layer right there. And then a copycat half layer. We'll go right there. And all of that can be filled in with the red local metal. There we go. Kind of just gives you a different color on the top of Arthur. Just something, something different and unique. That sort of thing. So at this point, this is what your Arthur should look like. And you can definitely call it call it good and complete um you can mess around with stuff do something different if you want it's completely up to you um i like how this looks and how it gives the signature almost lightning bolt on the side of arthur um you are able to, you can you know this is just a thing that you can do we grab the yellow local metal You can place a couple of these guys here for his letters LMS, just like that would represent what those those are right there. You could even fill these in with yellow if you wanted to, although that actually looks terrible. Um, you know, it's just the things that you could do. So I want to see what you guys do differently if you decide to do something differently. You know, join my Discord, post it to me, uh, let me see, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, this is my interpretation of Arthur. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I enjoyed. This took me a while to come up with, and I'm actually pretty proud of it. Um, we will see a tutorial for this fella right here at some point. You'll see a tutorial for this fella at some point. For this fella at some point. And there are some other secrets hiding around here on the island of Bob Door that will stay secret for now. But for now, this has been a short little tutorial, probably super long, where I once again have forgotten to show you how to glue. Literally, because we unlinked this back, back wheel, literally all you need to do is just place down a couple of temporary blocks run a bead of glue to connect everything come in here place it out of assembled mode hop in your chair and blow his whistle there you go if you like the video please like the video uh, if you dislike the video dislike the video oh i forgot to glue those so don't forget to glue those like I just did. Um, but yeah, you'll figure that part out on your own. If you like the video, like the video. If you dislike the video, dislike the video. Um, leave me a comment letting me know what you think. Uh, letting me know um, just whatever. You know, make sure you say hi to Bean and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. A uh, great rest of the week. All that stuff, all those things. Till then, until next time, this has been Bubby. Thanks very much, and okay, love you, bye! Good evening, everybody. My name is Bubby Craft, and tonight we're building something cool. We're building the express coaches for Gordon. Yay! But not these. These, uh, these look okay, and we built these on stream. Nah, we're building. 
these. Look at these. These are so cool. I found a new color of local metal inside of Steam and Rails, and it looks even better than the color we were using before. So let's get started. To start, you're gonna place down um, your double axle. Actually, I should say, don't start like I'm doing. Don't just build this because then you won't have anything to attach it to. You'll have to end up putting a train control inside the coach and it's gonna look weird with a train control inside the coach and so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. Make sure that you start building these by hooking, or not hooking, but like putting, I don't know, say put Thomas or put Gordon here and then enable build mode and build the co the coaches off of your train. Um, so pretend that Gordon's sitting here or something and we're building the coaches off of Gordon. We're going to start by placing down the double axle bogey. The axle that we want is the double axle passenger. This may or may not be from uh, extended bogeys, I'm not 100% sure. But you're going to place down your double axle bogey. Behind that, you're going to place a block of industrial iron. Off of the front of it, you're going to place a copycat slab. Wrap that copycat slab all the way around and just stop one block after your industrial iron. Off of your industrial iron, we're going to place down three girders. So we've got actually four, my apologies, we're going to place four girders. Off of that girder, you're going to place a basin. Okay, you're going to apparently click the wrong spot and it's going to do a base and uh, do a, a bogey instead. You're going to place a basin and then you're going to place down four. I actually don't need that anyway. Place down four copy or four pieces of goodness, don't do that. Four pieces of the industrial iron. And then another basin. Three, four girders. Industrial iron. And then you can place your last bogey. All in all, you should have, I believe, a 20 block. Um, Coach, let's just test, test this here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Perfect. Same as you just did on the other side. You're gonna run down your copycat slabs and stop one block after this piece of industrial iron. Excellent. From here, you're gonna take the, what is this, blank coal block carving. And you're just gonna start filling in your copycat slabs. step that we want to do we want to clear our palette just a little bit here we're gonna grab a copycat step and a copycat slope layer place come over to where you ended your copycat slabs skip one block place the blank uh, the blank hole in your offhand and place down one stair off of that stair Click on the top corner of that um, stair and just place down your copycat slope until it looks like this. And then continue your stairs all the way down through and stopping here. Switching to the copycat slope layer. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to give you that distinctive shape that you always saw in the show off of Gordon's coaches. Yeah, these coaches look a little bit long, but from the scale of things, 
This is how big Gordon is, so therefore his coaches need to be a little bit bigger to make the scale accurate. You can do whatever you want. You can shrink your coach. You could take out these two uh, blocks in the middle, for example, and shrink up the coach by two blocks. And actually, that might not look terrible. But me, I prefer the longer, more sleek and elegant looking coaches. But that's just my personal preference. You do as you wish. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna repeat what we did on the other side. probably just heard Bean in the background. Best guess as to what the story was that Bean was telling in the comments uh, wins bragging rights. There we go. Next we want to go ahead and grab ourselves the brown rectangle, rectangle brown wool from the chip mod. And we're going to grab the rectangle brown carpet as well as the copycat board. We're going to go ahead and do something a little bit different here on the inside. Um, basically, what you're going to do is the door is going to be right here, essentially. And then your wall next to the door is going to be right behind or right on either side of this block of industrial iron. So we're going to place down the polished cut aqua block and then the aqua pillar on top of that. Just repeat that on the other end. Like so. Perfect. Inside of the coach, we can get in it. There we go. Inside of the coach, you're going to run a long strip of the brown rectangle or rectangle brown carpet all the way down through here so that it covers up that stuff right there. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to go back one from our wall and we're going to just start placing down seats. So seat there, seat there, skip one, skip one, skip one, skip one, and then one up against the back wall. Did I do that right? I don't think I did that right. Apparently I skipped two inside that one. I just messed up that completely. Oh, you know what? I did skip that back one because we're going to do something different for the, the backs of the chairs. So you're going to take your rectangle brown carpet and you're going to place that brown carpet on the back side of either wall or either one of these uh, diaphragms that you just started there. And then you're going to take yourself a copycat board and you're going to place down a copycat board for the floor instead of the rectangle carpet. And the reason that we're doing that is because we want the brown terracotta next. We're going to place the brown terracotta in our offhand and we're going to shift click a board onto the back of these seats. If you put a carpet down, let me just show you. If you put a carpet down, you can't put it back on your seat. But if you put down a board uh, on the floor and then a board on the back of your seat, you have successfully made yourself seat backs inside of your passenger cars. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, the next thing we want to do 
is we want to grab ourselves a copycat panel. Clear out the palette just a little bit. We want a copycat board. And we want a copycat slice. Our copycat slice system is going to run all the way down through. So we want cyan local metal. Get the slash kind because it looks nicer. And then we want cut sandstone because it has that little line on the top of it there to give the effect of running more slashes down on the inside or on the top of it there. And then we want oak glass. We want to grab the oak glass pane, as well as just the regular oak glass. You're going to start by placing down your panels, running your panels all the way down through. Along the sides here. the side of your passenger car done. Co can copy what I'm doing here by placing down that temporary block just to continue it along and then remove that temporary block. Make sure to take your time. Slow. And if you make a mistake, either figure out a way to keep it, to make it your own unique version of the build, or fix it up real quick. Easy peasy. The next thing that we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to place down a temporary set of blocks. We're going to grab ourselves a copycat half panel. Place the copycat half panel. Like so. Rinse and repeat on the other side. Remove your temporary blocks. And what we want to do here is we want to grab a hold of a copycat slab. Run that copycat slab. Just do a temporary slab right there and then run two slabs up. Delete your temporary slabs. Repeat that process on the back. Like so. Alright. Moving into the inside of the coach now. What we want to do is we want to place down a copycat board on the inside layer of our coaches. We're going to fill that board, those two, those two boards on the bottom, with our cyan local metal. And our top two with the cut sandstone. We want to shift click a board on either side of those slabs that we just placed. We're going to extend out our copycat slab temporarily to place down another board. Place down a couple of temporary blocks 
and another board on top. So give yourself this diaphragm effect on the inside. We can fill our diaphragm with the whole pillar blocks. To give it that connection feel between the coaches. The inscribed coal block will go here to make it look like a builder's plate. And then use the polished coal on either side to give it a clean black color. Seems to be decorating the outside of our coach. Just kind of filling in stuff that makes sense. And stuff that looks good. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing here for the window design on your coaches. You can do whatever window design you wish. Make it your own. The cyan local metal will run across the bottom. And then anywhere you didn't put a window, put the cut sandstone. So the reason that we're using the oak glass panes instead of the oak glass is because the oak glass panes fit into the build a little cleaner. give you a little bit of a ledge effect on the outside here and then actually just looks really neat so that's why we're doing that remember to repeat everything that you did on the other side of your coach Once again, we place down a board, 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 temporary blocks, and a board. And that's how you make mistakes. You accidentally click. I'm just going to quickly place this stuff like so. is going to be the roof. And what you're going to do for your roof... Oh, wait. Left and click. We want the deep slate tiles. And we want the polished cut deep slate. We also want to grab the copycat layer instead of the copycat board now. as well as the copycat half layer. So what you'll do for your roof, and I'm not gonna build the whole roof because this video has gotten pretty long. I'm just gonna build a couple sections to show you here. Um, you're gonna place down a piece of your half layer. You'll click it twice. And then you'll place down a 
level three half layer. You'll place a copycat layer in the middle. That's a four. Half layer is a three. Half layer is a two. And on the outside of that is a slice or a one. Fill in your outer slices or your outer outer pieces with the deep slate tile and your middle with the polished cut deep slate. Repeat that all the way down and you'll have yourself a roof. One detailed piece that I did do to show you detail piece that I did do. Click in a slice three times. Take a deep slate tile bridge stair and place that like that. And place that like that. On mine there's a little bit of pixel fighting or Z fighting. I've seen it on other people's instances of Minecraft where this just looks like a curve and it's really cool. That's something that you can do just to kind of fill it out, flush it out, whatever you want to call it. You can also add a slice there to kind of flush that out a little bit too. Right, once you have your roof completely done. Next thing that I did, I added just a line of the copycat slice with the cyan local metal just to extend down that green part just a little bit more and make the underside less visible when you're just walking down the side. Your eyes don't instinctively rush right to the exposed stuff here. What's that? Last thing that we want to do, last couple of things, is we want to put on our copycat doors. As well as our copycat buffers and coupler. You'll put down the copycat door, bottom is the cyan local metal, top is the oak glass. It won't do the trick that it does here, which is why we just have the regular oak glass box block. Remember to always follow through and finish what you started on both sides. What's that? Place down your copycat stuff. Block is the polished coal for the color. You guys believe Thomas is Thomas the Tank Engine first came on the air 40 years ago? If you've gotten this far in the video, let me know in the comments below how old you were when you started watching Thomas. Last but certainly not least, you can 
somehow managed to get into your creation. Stand inside here, face the wall, and add in a brass door. You know what I did? I placed the seats backwards. The seat orientation is actually extremely important. saying seat orientation is actually very important. You want to make sure that your seats are going a specific direction as I found out when trying to connect them, uh, connect these passenger cars to um, a locomotive. If you were to uncouple them for example, Make sure that you actually start your seats, go into your car, and if this is where your train is, like if this is where your Gordon is or your Thomas is, you wanna make sure that you start your seats one backward from the wall, not where I put them. This does matter. And this does make a difference. There. Now, you can take your copycat board, place back any carpet, like so. Click the backs of your seats on. There you go. So if you're uncoupling your locomotive, when you go to recouple it, make sure that you recouple it with the tender here so that the seats are facing towards the locomotive. For some reason, I don't know why. I don't know how to explain it. Gosh, there we go. For some reason, that's just what happens. It doesn't let you couple and uncouple from the other side of the locomotive from back here for whatever reason. I don't know. At least it doesn't let me, I should say. So it may let you. Let me know if in, the, in the comments if it does. There we go. That's going to complete our build for the express coaches. These look a little bit better, in my opinion, than the ones that I designed and built on stream. So consider it an upgrade. Take some time today, maybe watch a Thomas episode. Have some fun, show me your builds on Discord, all the stuff and things. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks very much for watching and for all the support, and all the likes and comments and subscribes and even the dislikes, you know, it doesn't matter. I appreciate each and every single one of you and have a great day.
Okay, I'll be right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Bubby Craft, and today we are at yet another season finale. This one is going to be a little bit different than our last season finale. Last season finale, we did a, you know, a little bit of a video showcase of everything that was built the past season and kind of just going through everything and showcasing um, all of the builds and everything. This time, we're going to go on a little bit of a trip. And to do that, I'm going to need to do a little bit of a change of clothes. <laughs> That's right. I am the Mr. Bub Ductor, Mr. Conductor, Mr. Bub Conductor. I don't know. Call me what you wish. But I have a very special, very awesome uh, surprise guest here for us standing right in front of me. Boom! If you guys are familiar with the live streams, you know that I built Spencer on the live stream just to kind of, you know, have have Spencer. And yeah, this is uh, definitely not that same Spencer. So this is the RWS reimagining of Spencer. So we've got, for example, our RWS styled Henry right here. Well, here is our RWS styled Spencer right here. Not 100% sold on the way the back of this tender sticks up as much as it does, but hey, it is what it is. I may fix it, I may not. Um, but I also went ahead and uh, redid some of the Gor some of Gordon's express coaches into uh, Spencer's special express coaches, and here we go. Uh, so the schematics for the brand new Spencer, as well as the old Spencer, this guy right here, um, this guy right here is a little bit more closer to the TVS style scale that I've been doing, uh, TV series style scale, where, you know, he's as big as some of the other TV series style builds, um, like the original Thomas and Gordon, Henry, all those guys, so all the original TVS series builds. These guys. They haven't really come out of the roundhouse very much since they were brought over here, and for some reason, their bogeys have decided to kind of turn into the incorrect bogeys and everything, so I do need to fix these. But, uh, yeah, this is, you know, where the old TVS series style, TVS styled, um, locomotives have been sitting and I haven't really done much with them and I kind of feel bad about that because these were really fun to build and design and everything um, so maybe in season three we'll we'll do something do something a little bit different with them but what can you expect in season three well you'll probably see a build tutorial for um, some of the locomotives that weren't in the, the TV series, or I'm sorry, weren't in the railway series, you might see me do a RWS style build for them. Um, you may see some more rolling stock videos. There have been a lot of requests recently for build videos on how to do some of the regular rolling stock, for example, like the troubles of trucks and the vans and everything else. Um, Things like we have up here on our goods train, for example. So there have been a lot of requests for rolling stock. And I don't really like how some of these rolling stock look, but like for example, these uh, troublesome trucks, they've been updated probably about 15 times. And I'm happy-ish with the way they look. So I'd be okay with, you know, putting out a tutorial for how to do that. Um, and I'd be okay with revamping, you know, some of the stuff that I already have and making tutorials for it. Um, you may actually see a proper tutorial for Harvey. I did do a build tutorial for Harvey on a live stream. You may see a proper build tutorial for him. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You may also see... Terrence here pulling some coaches around. You may also see the island getting covered in snow, like this, for example. 
you know, we, we definitely have the snowy, the snowy season to look forward to coming up here. Where, you know, the world is going to start to turn snowy and, and things will, you know, just look so much better in the wintertime scenes. Like, look at this. Look at this. Gordon pulling the express with snow on the ground, you know. Napford Station covered in snow. Uh, you know, just little things like this. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So we've got some really cool stuff in store for season three. Um, and I would like to say in the same fashion that I did for the last season finale, I ended last season's finale with a notice that the, um, what should we call it? The schematic will be available in my discord. So that was for Sam back then, but now we have the uh, schematic for the TV series styled Spencer, TV series style, or I'm sorry, TV series styled Spencer, RWS series styled Spencer, and the RWS scaled coaches for Spencer as well. Those The schematics for those will be in uh, my Discord server. The link for my Discord server is on my YouTube page. And you're more than welcome to join, post your uh, post your photos of your builds, chat with us, hang out. You know, we've got a really great community. Um, you know, it's just, it's it's been so much fun making these builds for you guys. And I really, really, really enjoy doing this. And I thank you all for, you know, all of the continued support and amazing comments and suggestions and all the stuff and things but i mean just being able to create these awesome builds and share them with you guys is absolutely fantastic here's another sneak creek sneak preview of uh something for season three you can uh comment below what that what that guy's name is and, uh, yeah, we're going to have a release of uh, an update to the map at some point in Season 3 coming up here. So the map has we've definitely had quite a bit of work done on the map. Quite a bit. There's pretty much a little bit of a, uh, a different map here altogether. Um... Yeah, you, you know, we'll just kind of strafe over this just a little bit. By the time the update comes out, it will be quite different from what your, what your map looks like. And, uh, yeah. I won't take up any more of your time, guys. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Thanks so much for being here. Make sure to like the video if you like the video. Dislike the, the video if you dislike the video. Comment, share, subscribe. All the stuff, all the things. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being here. And yeah, I will catch you guys in season three, which won't be, you know, there's not gonna be too much of a delay. We'll see. Um, but there's uh, some surprises in store for everybody. Some, uh, you know, big reveals, that sort of thing. Uh, lots of stuff is in the works. And uh, may the stuff and things be with you as the amazing slip gator would, would say uh yeah we'll catch you guys later but uh this has been bobby craft i appreciate each and every single one of you and okay love you bye